And now, he'd say his parents had 10 cent heads, but that would mean they had 10 cents. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the choice we get on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Comedian Daphne Springs is with us. Has a very funny stand-up special out. It's called Daphne Springs, single female. It's available on YouTube. It's a uh, bite size. I like to say it's about, I don't know, forty-one minutes. I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Somewhere right in, right in there. Yeah, just Watched in case last you night. need some commercials. <laughs> Shot at the uh, Comedy Cellar in New York. Yes, is that where you were. Yeah. How that? Uh, so let's talk about. It. And then we're getting into fishing. Because uh, her dad fishes, and so does she. Yes. <laughs> so I'm interested in that. Um, so how long have you been doing stand-up? I've been doing stand-up since October 2010. So it makes 14 years this year from the day I started. But I don't know if you guys experience this as stand-up comedians where you start and then you stop for a while. So I stopped for like two and a half years. So do I still add that time? <laughs> Hmm, that's uh, interesting. Like if you're in a relationship and someone goes overseas yeah. for two years, do we count that as Especially the relationship? Especially if I cheated, you know? Yes, having sex with some Hungarian <laughs> ambassador for those two years. Yeah. If you cheat, you can't count the years. If you're okay. celibate, maybe maybe you can. So uh, you start, you stop. Why do you stop? I think when I first got into stand-up comedy, I didn't realize how much of a, uh, like a real career it was I think a lot of people that's why so many people think they can come jump jump in the lane nowadays is because it looks fun but you don't really understand the whole crafting of a joke and the punchline and the setup and and captivating the audience and then altering towards another audience you know and it, it's a it was a lot for me it was a lot I wasn't really getting up on stages I was performing in front of like open mics where nobody was laughing because it was clicks. You know, everybody go there with their little clicks. They laugh at their friends. And I don't think it's that people don't want to laugh at you. It's that sometimes your inner thoughts are louder than your your ears because you're thinking about your set when you go on stage. So you're not really listening to the person that's on stage. Yeah, I mean, comedians aren't a great audience because yeah. they're up in their head. And, and during the open mic time of your career your audience are other comedians yes essentially or because drunk people yeah people don't normally go to comedy clubs to see open mics or yes they see their friends and so they're they're sort of waiting on on them and then you get bumped a lot mm-hmm. did you get bumped a lot oh all the time Especially the, when you stop, when you get out of the Bringer show era and then celebrities show up and it's just like, yeah, um, we're not going to catch you this week. Well, can I come back next week? Well, we really don't have another opening until next year. And you're like, well, this is my one time to shine. Yeah, I, I remember getting bumped a, a few times when I was doing open mics. And I didn't really mind if the person showed up with something to say or something to do. The the celebrity comedian. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they'd show up, they'd bump you, and they'd get up on stage and they'd go, What's going on out there? Where are you from, Sweaterfest dude? And I'm like, I, I'm getting bumped so you can literally just stand on stage. Yeah. Like, you don't need more stage time. Now, if you need to work something out, by all means, work it out. But if you're just hanging out on stage, I never, that I didn't. I didn't get that part. Yeah, and that, yeah, Shore. where they're just <laughs> they're just interviewing other comedians, and then when they get off stage, they wouldn't even talk to you again. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. definitely feel that. Yeah. Now, would they back when I did it? They thirty people would show up, fifteen slots would be open. They'd put your name in a hat and they just like oh the pull, lottery. They just pull the lottery out of there. Do they do that? They still do that? Yes, yeah, still like the Powerball. And yeah. the mega millions. You're yep. just waiting on your numbers to get called. Yep. Instead of five, you just need one. So the odds are a little bit better, but still sometimes not in your favor. When they were going to do, at some point, when they were going to do like 15 people and 30 put their names in the hat, by the time they got to 13 and they didn't pick me, I was like, now I hope they don't pick. Now I just want to go home. Yeah. I'm ready to go. And then what about all the, their friends that they would put in those spots Oh, sometimes? Yeah. So that can take up another six spots. Yeah. And now you down left to nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's crazy. 
Yeah, it sucks. But, you know, everything sucks at the beginning. Always. And then uh, and then you work your way through. That's and now how you, you know got a special. Yep. So I was talking to you off the air about uh, your dad, prolific fisherman. Yes. Fished every day. Every single day when I was a kid, we fished. I'm from South Florida, but we lived a short time in uh, Minnesota, so we used to fish up there. So that's where I was introduced to, like, freshwater fishing. Did your dad go to work in the morning and then knock off at 3 in the afternoon and fish, or or he just fished? Oh, no, no. Yeah, he definitely worked. But my dad was the type that he would go before work, and he would go after work. That's how much he loves fishing. I can't. I'm trying to think of, uh, pardon the pun, the allure of fishing. Guys love fishing. I've done it enough. And I never really fully get it. Like, when when we're doing it, like, there's the guys that love fly fishing. Mm-hmm. Like, Jimmy loves Slow fly motion. fishing. And I went out fly fishing. With, I tried you know, it's 12 hours, three days in a row, just kind of standing there, just doing the fly thing. You're always in motion. Nothing right? ever really happens. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're just sort of saying, I want to be left alone, I want some zen, or there's something about the activity that really um, satisfies them. But I I, I, can, I never fully get fishing. Like, is it a psychological thing? Is it a practical thing? Is it an emotional thing? Is, is it like I'm, I'm getting food? For tonight, I never thought I never thought about it from that aspect. I will say this: from fishing in freshwater fishing and then deep sea fishing, deep sea fishing, you always find fish. Yes, because all you have to do is go on your boat, turn on the fish finder, because my dad owned a boat, and we would know if we was under the under fish was under us, or we knew if it was a reef, and then we can just drop down and catch fish. It's always drop in, drop out, drop in. I remember some sometimes like you get in schools, they call that that's where fish are fil- uh, swimming by the thousands, and all you have to do is throw out there, and we tie guppy rigs where you put like three hit hooks on there and a weight on the bottom, you can catch three fish at a time. Now, freshwater fishing, that was so slow, and the only reason I used to like to go freshwater fishing with my dad is because... He would let me drive. I learned how to drive cars when I was a car when I was 12 years old. And it was this place in Duluth, Minnesota, where this man, he was in a bar and he used to make the best cheeseburgers. So I would go for the driving and the cheeseburgers because the fishing was just like. And then sometimes when you did catch bass, they would have parasites on them. So you couldn't eat them. Yeah. I also, I don't think I like fish enough. Like if I could catch a cow. I would do it. Ooh. I would catch Spare a steak. Spare ribs. Yeah, bacon. ribs. Mm. Well, bad bacon, i go with the pig, but, when you, but you oh, know. But that's you know all right. What? I know what you, you mean. You know what? You know, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know. When you would go fly fishing with Jimmy, did you ever catch a fish? Because I think you need that high of catching Yeah, the high fish. of catch. And deep sea fishing is always a high. The other fishing, I tried uh, fly fishing before. It's very slow. I'm like, when people fly fish, I'm like, you must have a really nagging wife. But you also have a moral aspect of your life where you're like, hey, I'm not going to get a side chick. I'm just going to fly fish. No um, mistress. I caught my friend Daniel when I was fishing with uh, Jimmy, which is we uh, we went to some retreat somewhere in Montana. Adam Perry Lang made steaks. Thank God. <laughs> we would go out on the boat like the whole day out on the river and fly fish from the boat. And sort of some point at the end of the day, I did the the motion. And maybe a wind gust kicked in, no. and I flung forward, and I caught my friend Daniel in the neck, Ooh. and it went all the way through his neck and was, like, pulling on his <laughs> on his oh. neck, and it went through and through. Wow. And uh, the guide was freaked out. The guide's like, oh, man, I never saw this before. Although the guide stopped on the shore an hour earlier to meet up with one of his buddies so he could get high <laughs> with, with him, yeah, one of his buddies. What like, kind of high? Uh, pot. Oh, okay. Because you know what? I'm from the South. Mountain and high. when people say, my grandmother would be like, your cousin's getting high. You know, I don't know if she's talking about weed or crack. So sometimes oh, yeah. I have oh. to ask people to be specific. It's, more, it's less crack in, the, okay. in Montana and okay. the rivers. You know, like <laughs> yeah, the fly fishing crews, more weed centric. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. A little, little less uh, inner city Chicago. <laughs> yeah. So That's a bold move. 
Yeah, I think we got high with him, too. But he, he was, like, go, going down the river going, oh, my buddy's going to come up at this next camp or something. And then, then we parked the boat. Then everyone got high. Then I hooked my friend mm-hmm. in the neck. And then it got, got caught in his neck. And then uh, the, That's the, the, worst. the guide started freaking out. Like, oh, I've never seen this before. And then he started talking about not wanting to be responsible for it. Mm. And then we started talking about ways to get it out of his neck. And um, and it was it was a pretty touch and go. I think what he did is he tied another s- string around it, and then we pulled the skin real tight, uh, and then he just oh whipped God. it, just like yeah. like 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 uh, when the Three Stooges try to pull a tooth, they just tie it to a string and put it wow. to a doorknob, slam the door. Slam, slam the door. That's how we did it. Yeah, because hooks they're not just smooth on the end; they actually. They curve and then they have another little thing on the outside of the curve. A so barb. yeah, you can't yeah. just pull it yeah, out. Yeah, I I know. It, I felt bad. He felt. Were bad. Were you guys still friends after this? Oh yeah, yeah. Because it ended up being a pretty clean removal. Oh, okay. Felt pretty good about it. I don't remember really catching fish, and I don't really like eating fish that much. Oh, for real. I'm okay with it, but I'd much rather have ribs. So I'd much rather catch a cow. But uh, but you'd go out and then you'd sell the fish with dad when you're in Florida. Yeah, uh, so I remember my dad. We used to just he used to just give away the fish. We used to catch so much because Florida they have a lot of fishing limits. So so snapper it may be twelve per person. And even though I'm a little person, I still get a count of twelve snapper. My dad get twelve, so that's twenty four. So sometimes we would leave. Um, you know, we would have to leave after you catch a limit. And then some fishing like sand perch, ocean perch is no limit. But um, my dad, we used to uh, give it away. And I was like, can I sell it? And he was like, yeah. So he used to just pull up to communities that were close by our home. Like Florida has a lot of apartment buildings that are U-shaped. So he'll pull up. He'll open his trunk and I'll go beat on everybody's door and I'll beat as hard as I could, go to the next door, fresh fish, fresh fish. And my dad be out there in the trunk with the the um the uh cooler open and some Ziploc bags and people would come out and tell us which fish and I had to negotiate the prices and stuff. So I always thought that this kind of taught me work ethic kind of early on. Uh in your special, you're talking about I think your uncle who yeah. may have died in prison. Yeah, he absolutely he did die there. He absolutely mm-hmm. died in prison. Well, I said may have, because sometimes there's artistic <laughs> license when people Absolutely, do stand-up yeah. specials, and they go, well, he didn't really die in prison. He died shortly after or whatever. But he died uh-huh. in prison mm-hmm. after being in there for 35 years. Yes. And you guys, as a family, weren't sure what to do with his remains. So, I I mean, I'm, that it's near and dear to my heart as well, because I got one of those families. Too. Yeah, because my grandmother, she was she she wanted a funeral. What was he in prison for? Um, murder. That makes sense for 35 years. Yeah. Um, so he's from South Florida. It it, it made, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I was very young, maybe like two. So I believe it made national news Mm -hmm. and, um, he, him and some guy, they robbed a a pawn shop and then they set it on fire and the man was in there. He died Mm. and his children, every time he came up for parole, they showed up to that hearing. And so he never got out. He passed there. The children of the guy who died in the Yeah, poncho. absolutely. Yeah. Seems unnecessary to set it on fire after you yeah, rob it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I don't I never got a chance to really talk to him or ask him about like what was the whole thing about it, but you know, he was very young when that happened. And I, I think it was a it w- it was in the efforts to like try to get rid of like the evidence, but so, it just ended up going bad. So then he dies in prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's, you know, relatively young, I guess, if he did the crime when he was young. No, still like 50s. 50s? Yeah. All right. And uh, now the prison says what when somebody dies in the prison? Oh, yeah, they give you a couple of options. They can ship you the body, mm-hmm. um, and they charge you for that. Yeah. Two grand. And then, or they'll uh, cremate the body for you. In the prison? Yeah. So they'll cremate. I don't know if they do it in the prison or out, but they'll cremate and send you the ashes. How but much does that cost? I, I think like seven hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. So, yeah. When I thought about it, I was like, "Yeah, that's in that shipping the body. It doesn't include like the funeral cost. That's an extra two thousand dollars on top of the cost." Mm. Yeah. So what'd you guys go with? 
We end up going with shipping the body, you know. You shipped the body for two grand. Yeah, and had the funeral. And then what was crazy is that the— uh, Wait, how far were you guys from the prison? From Florida to Georgia. So all of us had to fly into Georgia. My uh-huh. my, fa- my family is originally—my father's side and my mother's mother are all from Georgia. So I'm guessing if you got to ship it to Oregon, it's more than two grand. Yeah, they, yeah I they don't have know. To do, yeah. Well, like, but listen, Florida to Georgia— it's like you ship a car from New York to L.A., it's it's three grand. But if you ship it from L.A. to Santa Barbara, it's 400 bucks. Yeah, you know? like it's yeah. A, there's, a da- there's a distance, diesel yeah. fuel. Yeah, there's probably a shipping calculator on the website. That- <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, ship, the weight. <laughs> they ship them over, and they must do it in like a refrigerated truck or something. I'm not really for sure. I wasn't a part of the process, Did but you, I'm pretty but sure we saw the body. Yeah, so it was it was embalmed, you know, and stuff like that. So and do fat people cost more? Oh, that's a good point. I don't think they do. I think they're like the airlines that they just have a have a fee. <laughs> yeah. I wish they weighed okay. everybody. Just standard. I'd be fine with that. Okay, I'll be riding for real cheap. <laughs> well, look, you know, uh, uh, corpses aside. Um, there's a price. I don't think like, I don't think most Americans think this way, but Mm -hmm. there's a price and, and it's a ticket price and it's based a lot on weight Mm -hmm. because jet A fuels expensive and weight is what they have to move, you know? And so if your luggage is over 50 pounds, then they charge you for whatever. And if you have an extra bag, you know, then they charge you for whatever because it's, it's like weight oriented. So... If you're 130 pounds like you are, I don't know how much you weigh. But 135, you, you look spot 135, on. 135, yeah. you look fit. Uh, but the average weight of the passenger on the plane is 185. Mm-hmm. Then you're subsidizing those people. Yeah, but that's I'm paying just, the same ticket price. Right, by okay. subsidizing them. That's mm-hmm. just how it goes. You can look at it as you're paying more or they're paying less, or you're both doing a version of you pay more and they pay less, and you, you meet in the middle, but that's... Those are the facts. Yes. And when people go like, oh, why should I have to? It's like, because that's life. That's Mm -hmm. how it works. When you go to the stupid salad bar and you make yourself a salad, they just weigh it. And then they charge you 16 bucks or they charge you nine bucks, but it's the weight. Mm -hmm. It's how much salad did you get? Yes. And if they just had a flat rate, then the people loaded up on stuff would be getting away with it. And the people who didn't do it would be subsidizing them. I don't don't get why that's a hate crime in America. It's like, (laughs) it's just weigh yourself. It would incentivize you. Uh, Exactly. Cheap people would act like they were going into a UFC fight trying to make middleweight. You know, yeah. you, you'd be looking at your terminal. wife; she'd be in the sauna with Vaseline spread all over and a trash bag over her head. And like, where are you? I'm going southwest to Phoenix in two days. I got to cut weight. Okay, right. And then you'd be in the kitchen, and she'd be drinking water, and you'd be yelling, "Spit it out! Yeah. Spit it out!" And when Everyone you get to the gate, you're like, did you pee? Did you <laughs> oh, yeah. pee? Take these salt tablets. And then when we got to Southwest to weigh in, they do the move where she even removed her underwear. And I held the towel in front of her, oh, like when God. De La Hoya yeah. would weigh in. I just hold it up in front of her, get the weight. Yeah. And, and then, then if she they could, have a couple of spots left, you just got to fight it out. We could go to Guy Fieri's bar mm-hmm. and rehydrate right after we weighed you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you, you'd you'd weigh in at you know one forty seven, but you'd be at one seventy two when you walked onto that yeah. plane. You'd have enough bloody marys and sandwiches in you to completely rehydrate. <laughs> I so, support this. I support it. Yeah, you're lighter. You shouldn't have to pay for the fat I agree. people. So, uh, your uncle, mm-hmm. who you never really knew that well, no, because he was in jail for thirty. Yeah, in Florida, so I've kind of been all over. And then it was like northern Florida, too. So Did he get 35 years, or was he oh, in life. for 35 life. years? Life. life. All right. Life. And so uh, then they shipped the body for mm-hmm. two grand. Mm-hmm. Then there's the funeral Yeah. for two grand. Oh, or I don't more. know. Yeah, it's probably it's more. Because yeah, a that. casket is just even that price alone. Oh my then you got to rent the church, and then. But one thing about um, family, re- I mean, I call them family reunions, but sometimes funerals is uh, is that you know all the family will come in and pitch in on food, so mm. you'll have the repast afterwards, and everybody bring potluck style. So it's like, how does uh, my family? Of the white family, atheists, but yeah. they they did their old school potluck too. 
but that's because they were super lazy and they wanted everyone else to cook everything. So they farmed everything out. But I feel like with the black community, it comes from a place of love. Yeah, the white food is good. White people come from a place of cheapness yeah. and lethargy. I went to a um, white person's house for Thanksgiving, and I left. I left still hungry. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh man, did they screw up? The, what was it? The macaroni and mac cheese. And cheese. Got to play that tape. That <laughs> mac and cheese lady. <laughs> what? What was that? Is the problem? Okay, is the problem with white people's Thanksgiving is they get too cutesy with it? I mean, they're serving salmon. They got some. Uh, it's poach. all very light. It's yeah, very they, light. They got some broccolini. Yeah. It's like I want. I, I want to live. I want I candy live. yams. Yeah. I want candy. I want some candy. Goddamn mm-hmm. yams. I want potatoes. Like mm-hmm. I want heavy. I want stuffing. Yeah. I don't want your version. Of Thanksgiving. I want fat ass, old school, heavyweight Thanksgiving. Which I think is cool for Thanksgiving, but it's a problem when you eat that out all the other days of the year. Yeah, but is, just yeah. for Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving, I want to go all out. So what happened? You went to the. I mean, yeah, I just felt it was a lot. It's string beans. Mm. Um, no seasoning. Oh. Mm. Um, sweet potatoes, but whipped. Mm. Very. So no, no brown sugar. No brown sugar. No yeah, the mini you know, marshmallows. You know, no. Mm. I, I just I, felt I, like I, they farmed it out. I was like, out. I could live till I'm 115. <laughs> Do you think I they could walk in my it out? 90s. I think they go to Gelson's or something and they farm that shit out. Yeah. I, I. Uh, well, let's listen to the to the lady with the mac and cheese, which always makes yelling me at her niece. Yeah, for getting too cutesy. We told you don't put that shit in the macaroni and cheese, but you insist on putting it. So since you want to do things your damn way, we're going to do shit our way. We get ready to go upstairs and go to sleep while you clean up all this shit for Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We love you. But guess what? This shit ain't fair that we couldn't even get a decent thing of macaroni and cheese. We got to wait and go back to Goose for Auntie Karen to make us some damn macaroni and damn cheese. Because you decided to do some bullshit you didn't see off the damn internet. Don't experiment on damn Thanksgiving. Don't experiment on Thanksgiving. Mom, you experiment by your damn self. Cream cheese before. Hell, don't try it with us. Mm. We don't want that mm, shit. Geez. Auntie Karen gave you the damn recipe. But you chose to do shit on your own. Yeah. Can't do that. Don't experiment on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Don't experiment with mac and cheese. Macaroni and cheese in the black household is like a main event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't just play around with that. So you want, I mean, you made the mistake of going to white people's house for Thanksgiving and you walked away Light. unimpressed. Light. Yeah. They have turkey. Yeah. I they, felt healthy. They have uh, <laughs> beef in there? Ham? No, no. No. There was no pork. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, yeah. on behalf of one. I added people. 10 years to my life, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, so you ship the, the body mm-hmm. back. You had the funeral. Cost way too much money. I got the... I So, man, I got a lot of range in, in funerals. Oh, you do? In terms of money. Mm. In terms of money. I mean, I don't know who has a bigger chasm than, than me. My family is all in the Neptune Society. Your dad would like it because they take you and they dump you in the ocean. <laughs> and uh, they all paid like 50 bucks in wow. like 1965. And you just give them... 60 bucks and then at some point when you die they just come get you and they just come cremate you Mm. and if you want to pay extra to go out on the boat and dump the ashes in the sea and throw the rose petals down you can pay extra but we didn't do that they just take you right Mm. so my grandfather and my grandmother were in the neptune society Mm. so they just come take you you don't do, there's no headstone, there's no urn. Wow. They don't return the ashes. There's nothing. You take their word for it <laughs> that they took you and cremated you and got rid of you. That's how it worked. <laughs> but then, then my mom died. Whole time your, your grandmother's in a chicken nugget. Yeah, she's in a chicken nugget. Yeah, she's a chicken nugget. Could or, or maybe a McRib. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, they said that they was it was human meat found before. They did. Oh. Yeah, they so I was like, wow, that's crazy. Soylent green with the uh, nana. <laughs> so that's my grandma, my grandpa, and I'm only I have a small family, so I don't have people that died, but so much. But then my then my mom dies, 
and my mom dies, and I don't know what happened to her. Oh, for real? Yeah, she's just gone. Who came and picked her up? Well, I found out because I went oh. and talked to my stepdad. Mm-hmm. And then I said to my stepdad, a uh, couple weeks after she died, I said, where'd mom go? And he said, oh, she donated her body mm-hmm. to UCLA Medical. Oh, wow. But again, it's a freebie because mm-hmm. they come pick you up. And sometimes when I do stand-up, I tell this joke, and an audience always goes, oh, <laughs> they always feel horrible. I go, uh, the joke's basically, um, I go to my stepdad, what happened to mom? She goes, he donated her body to UCLA Medical. And then I say, what were they studying? Moms who never loved their sons? And then everyone goes, oh, because <laughs> oh. The they just get sucked you, out. You can say any horrible joke you want. You tell a joke about mom and they go, oh, so uh, once in a while when I want to get the oh, yeah, that's I, do funny, it, though. I do it that way. So I'm so I'm over for three in the expense department. I had mm-hmm. grandma, grandpa and my own mom died. Didn't cost nothing. A penny. Wow. A penny. But when my ex-wife's dad died Mm -hmm. years ago, unbeknownst to me, I paid for the funeral. And I didn't know it. I was just hanging around. Did he pay for your wedding? No. Oh, (laughs) Listen, nobody's lost more than me. There's nobody's done worse than me in in those departments. No, he did not. Um, But I I was at the wake and I was walking around, which was at my other shop. And people walk around, and people kept coming up to me and go, hey, I just I want to thank you. Thanks thanks for what you did. And I'd go, oh, yeah, okay. I yeah, thought they meant, like, having the, the shop, you yeah. know, hosting the thing, you know. Yeah. After about the fifth person came up to me and said, hey, thank, I appreciate what you did here. That was real generous. You know, I was like, oh, wait a second. Did I just pay for this whole thing? Because it was forced lawn and mausoleum and the whole. Mm. So I walked up to my wife, and I said, hey, did uh, do we pay for this whole thing? And she oh. goes, she goes, yeah. And I go, oh, uh, how much did that cost? And she goes, well, <laughs> it wasn't that much. The most expensive thing was the casket. Oh yeah, always. and I said, oh okay, how much was that? And she goes, thirteen hundred dollars. And I go, oh. Okay, that that's not that bad. It's the most expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thirteen hundred. Yeah. Right. Then she paused and she goes, "Oh no, thirteen thousand. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. wow. But now, who has more range than me? Because you from- my own family, yeah. did not cost me a penny. But my father in law, I got a th- fourteen, thirteen and changed casket. You're going up even. in here. So that's that's some range, right? Yeah. I don't know who many who, who have that kind of range. Yeah, that's a lot of range there. <laughs> yeah. Cats, kids are like little little baby houses, huh? They, little small homes. Yeah. 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 They ain't Do you appreciate a good cheap. casket? The craftsmanship? Well, the problem with that story is I was like third. 13000 I mean, it, by the way, it was probably $13,826. It wasn't $13,000. Oh, okay. you know, was, uh, we, plus taxes. Right, right. We were, we were 14. And I remember I remember it was this very slick, unique cobalt blue mm-hmm. was with like brass handles on it or something. And I go, man, 14 I go, how much is a casket? And I... The, like the next day, I said to my assistant, man, $14,000 for a casket. I don't know how much... And he goes on to Costco. Yeah. <laughs> he finds the exact same casket. I mean, look, the picture looked uh-huh. exactly the oh, same boy. cobalt blue with the thing. $1,100. No. I was like, oh. Now, I don't know if it was lined nicely. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know if it was casket for casket. It just, wow. From a photograph. You could have switched. You should have switched them from out. From where I was standing and then the photograph, it just looked exactly that's like the, the auction price versus the dealer price. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So there's that. So, you know, yeah. we've all suffered. Yeah. The wake, the power mm-hmm. goes out. You switch mm-hmm. the casket. <laughs> Lights turn back on. Nobody's the wise. I, I think the deal is is you're going to get the deal from Costco. If you go into the funeral home. Oh, yeah. They're going to. Yeah. That's basically like you Those going. Those are millionaires. That's like Caesar's. 
Caesar's Palace mm-hmm. has a shop where you could buy belts and shoes and stuff, but you're going to pay. You buy a watch at Caesar's in the gift shop, you're paying top, top dollar. But the kind of like just personality you have to upsell people that are grieving. I will file this under many, many jobs I couldn't do. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Could you do that no, job? No, no, I had a friend tell me the other day she actually does the makeup on dead bodies. I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. No. I don't even like to look at them at funerals. It looks weird. Yeah. But I will say this about her and that job. The makeup on a dead body, and it sounds pretty morbid and it sounds like a you know tough job, mm-hmm. but that makeup job is going to go into eternity. Mm. That makeup, he, that person's oh. going to meet St. Peter with her makeup. Yeah. That person's going to the ground, and if you dug them up <laughs> 10 years later, they'd still have her makeup on versus makeup for porn star. Oh, yeah. As soon as she hit the pillow, fate. Face down, ass up, it's gone. <laughs> I'm thinking about other stuff hitting her. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that smears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do you do the makeup for the Oscars. You get the makeup. I mean, let's face it. We all want our art to live on. Mm-hmm. It's called makeup artist. Yeah. So you do the makeup for a celebrity, Zendaya. <laughs> I just like yelling that. You do <laughs> Zendaya's makeup for the Oscars. Uh-huh. You're doing it at noon, one o'clock that day, you know, yeah. and then she goes out, does the Oscars, goes to the governor's ball, goes to the part, mm-hmm. Vanity Fair party, whatever. She'd come home at two, three, wipes the makeup off. 14 hours tops. But you get a good run. Yeah. You had a decent run. You do the porn star, 20 minutes, half an hour. Quick. Pow. Yeah. Gone. Gone. You do the person in the casket, eternity. Why don't mm. you tell that to your friend? I think she takes some solace in that. Yeah, I mean, she'll probably feel good about that. She's like, yo, I'm taking this all the way up to the gates of heaven. That is the last look, hell. this person. And the there's person. no wet wipes or anything. Yeah. There's nothing they're being buried with. That's just them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. I always wonder if you, when uh, you go visit St. Peter and you're going up to heaven, are you the age that you die? Because mm. I, I should probably go now. Cause oh, yeah. Can I go with my man. plastic surgery? Oh, yeah, do that. Yeah, or does that stay on earth? You know what I mean? I always wondered that. I feel that way with celebrities who die when they're like 85 and we've forgotten about them, but they were on Falcon Crest in the 80s and stuff, and then they show the old man picture. Just show, show them in their prime. Let's see the prime. Yeah. Let's see the prime. Yeah, let's see I want to see them at the best. That's the best part about being a ball player. They always show you a picture of you in your prime <laughs> because you're in, in your uniform. Yeah. You, you That's know what I mean? recognize you. That's you are at the height of your powers. You're 28 years old. That's how they recognize you. Yeah. You know, Charles actor. Barkley now is scary. You know <laughs> That's what I mean? That's right. <laughs> Bad All right. knees. Why don't I love that guy, though? Why don't we do, uh, we'll take a break, right? Yeah. And then we'll do some news. Let's do it. Daphne will hang out. We'll do that right after this. Just thrive. Life can be a little overwhelming. And it's not just your mind that suffers. Stress messes with your digestive and immune system, too. Just Calm, the breakthrough new stress-busting formula from Just Thrive. Exclusive mood-lifting blend is clinically proven to help you relax and breathe easier. And as little as four weeks, I take it every day. I love this stuff. It's award-winning. Just Thrive probiotic. I use this, uh, again, Pop it every single morning, part of the routine. You can feel the difference. A spore probiotic with 1,000 times better survivability than most probiotics banishes bloat and constipation so your gut can produce more serotonin, your happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep as well, all with a money-back guarantee. I know the owners. I know the creators. This is a great couple, and it's a great product, and that's why I take it. It's Just Thrive, right, Dawson? 
Right now, when you go to JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM, you can get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm. That's like getting a month for free. And a portion of every purchase goes to Vitamin Angels, a nonprofit organization that saves the lives of millions of children and moms-to-be around the world by ensuring they get the vitamins and minerals they need to stay healthy and strong. To learn more about this groundbreaking company, don't miss Adam's interview with Tina Anderson, founder of Just Thrive. Take control today with Just Thrive. Men don't like crazy women anymore. I don't know what happened. Seven years ago, I used to thrive. But I don't know where the shift came. Nowadays, men do not like crazy. But I used to give you every bit of crazy. I would key your car just because it was Monday. When you went to sleep at night, I would cut little pieces of your beard hair off just to let you know I was close to your neck. Don't play with my love, you know? I'm passionate. But men nowadays, they don't like crazy. They like peace. Number one survey answer says men like peace. For all the men that like peace, clap it up. Yeah, look around the room, because that is gay as fuck. <laughs> Daphne Springs is on the Adam Carolla Show. Daphne's got a stand-up special. Daphne Springs, single female. It's available on YouTube, and it is very funny. So check that out. She's going to hang out. We're going to do some uh, news with uh, Chris from Expat. Yeah, let's talk cosmetics. I know Daphne, is. Uh, you have a cosmetic line, right? Yeah, actually I do. I have my own lipstick and lip gloss line. Ooh. Just for corpses or for regular people too? <laughs> for regular people, but nice. you can put it on that corpse. All right. They don't discriminate mm-hmm. if you're alive or not. Mm. Um, so uh, there it is. So um, Dove, mm-hmm. they have announced, you know, obviously – we know them from their marketing campaign around around real bodies and beauty. Mm-hmm. So they have announced that they will n- never use AI bodies in advertising because mm. I guess that's going to be a thing now. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've been scrolling like Facebook, for instance. I know you're really familiar with Facebook, Daphne. Daphne. Um, so they all the pictures are AI now. Like they put celebrity photos up. They're just they're all AI. They 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 smooth them out. They make their bodies look um, different. Mm-hmm. Bigger, bigger butts, bigger boobs, bigger mm, muscles, things no like that. Elite. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. So, um, so Dove is on it, and they're like, "Look, we we are not touching AI." No, they're heroes. Yeah, or who gives a shit? Oh, I don't know. I listen. I, there's a aesthetic. Uh, forget about human beings. There's automobiles, Mm -hmm. and everyone agrees a Ferrari looks better than a Yugo or Pinto Mm -hmm. or Daihatsu Charade. And uh, unfortunately, some people are born into a Daihatsu Charade body, and others are born into Mm -hmm. a Ferrari body. But the good news is, is most of the population is in the you Pinto know, body. Pinto body, mm-hmm. Camry, you know, utilitarian, it'll work. And by the way, there's a lid for every pot. You'll find somebody. You'll find some other version of you on the male side or on the female side. So, but there is a, this is what we like to look at. And uh, we like it in the, on the male side. We don't really argue with it. You see Schwarzenegger, you see professional wrestlers, you see the action heroes, you see all these all these guys, and you go, all right, I get it. The guy's got big arms and a cleft in his chin, and uh, I'm not that, but I'll I'll watch. Um, I think we, it's okay to understand that with women as well. Doesn't make you better. Just makes you. It's it's a it's an aesthetic that we've agreed on. Now we're trying to talk everyone out of the aesthetic, but it's really hard to talk people out of the aesthetic. Now Dove pretends. Like they're talking us out of what we're attracted to, but uh, <laughs> listen, all of here. Uh, here's a here's the thought experiment, and it's super easy. Who are the most eligible males on the planet? Like you go, I don't know, Leonardo mm-hmm. DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's he's one. Sure. Um, and you start just kind of going down the line. I don't know who are the most Pop, popular, who who are the most desirable? George Clooney. Mm. Who are the most desirable? Denzel. Well, Denzel Washington married for fifty years, so he doesn't really count. But who are the most desirable males, and who do they end up with? And is it ever the fat chick from the Dove commercial? And if the answer is no, then we have spoken. That's it. That's how we roll. Yeah, you can't because- talk us out of it. 
productive to actually say that. I didn't expect that from them. Like, I expect that to be a rollout from Irish Spring. Mm, uh. <laughs> I expect Irish Spring to be like, hey, we don't care. We're never going to change. Like, but <laughs> Dove, it's like, Dove, every time I look at your advertisement, it's always some beautiful, attractive woman and touching her legs and the soap. It's never natural bodies. I mean, it makes sense that Dove goes after the fatties because they use up more product. Ooh. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, well, if you're. If you sell mayonnaise, you want to go after bigger slices of bread. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just more mm -hmm. more your product to spread around. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get a... It was a business decision. You that. get a 300-pounder versus a 150-pounder. That's twice as much Dove mm -hmm. product it takes to clean up those uh, creases. You want to get you know? lost in those rows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need more demand. Yeah. So that's what they're going after. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it uh, the Women's NCAA Championship actually drew a bigger audience than the men's this year wow yeah it's a so big deal it, it's a huge deal so it, they uh they had an average of 18.9 million viewers viewers while the wow. men's had 14.8 wow well i i suppose the men's people was a kind of a foregone conclusion that connecticut was gonna mm -hmm. win i i guess or uh yukon yeah. um so maybe there was a little bit of that it also didn't turn out to be that competitive, but also they had uh, what's her name from Iowa, Caitlin who's kind of shooting lights out, yeah. and I think that that's a big It'll deal. Be her, her last collegiate game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, just interesting uh, that finally it's it's happening. I, mean, I don't know if this will translate to the WNBA. I mean, her and uh, Angel Reese are they're declared. Well, for the draft. you know, the, the NBA wasn't always the nba they they had some lean years you know mm. and they did have some tough years and then at some point larry bird and magic johnson showed up and then they were squaring off against each other and there was bird versus johnson you know and then people started getting more into, into it. it you know and heavyweight boxing can be that way you know they had some good years and they had some blah years and then tyson showed you know you know there was uh muhammad ali and those were some great, you know, heavyweight years. And then, um, and then Holmes, Larry Holmes showed up. And Larry Holmes was good, but people didn't love Larry Holmes. It wasn't much of a personality. You know, he was just effective, but it was a little, he didn't inspire people, you know. And so they, he was fighting guys you never heard of. And so it took a little mm -hmm. dip. And then Tyson showed up and he was knocking everyone's head off. And so we got all up into it again. You know, then it flatlined for a long time. Then Tyson Fury showed up and we we're like back again, you know. So there's a, like an ebb and a, a flow wave. to things. And if you can get a good, like if the WNBA could get like a good bird magic rivalry, Celtic, you know, Laker kind of thing going on. Yeah. yeah. People will get into it. I think social media is helping them too. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's what other years of the WNBA didn't have, people now being able to brand themselves. I got a problem. And the women are getting more attractive. One of the, one of the things I'm noticing, one thing I've always noticed, and uh, was, <laughs> there's a lot of hair now, like big time hair. Like the center, who did Iowa play and lose to? South Carolina. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. They got like a six foot seven center. And her hair is is big, It's big and it's red, and it is out to here. And she's six foot seven, and she's whipping around. Mm -hmm. You're getting hit with a face full of hair. Like I I don't exactly know. You know when you're guarding her and she's backing you in, yeah. you just I'm got surprised. a face full of hair. I wonder what the rules are for that. Uh, there evidently mm -hmm. are no rules, but I've I, seen dreads. I've, I've seen braids, dread. I've like, seen braids down to the waist, and when yeah. you whip your head around, it's like well. Psh, like you're gonna tear Next a retina. Day you're waking up with uh, hairballs. <laughs> yeah, it gives you an advantage to have whippy hair that you can just snap. Mm. Well, you're this this chick is six. I think she's like six seven. She's got a oh, wow. ton okay. of hair, and you're six three, and she's backing you up in the paint, and you just got a face full of hair. <laughs> you don't even know what's going on at this point. <laughs> then she whips her hair around. She does a pump fake. She whips it around right. Whoops. With yeah. the hair, then brings it down to the left and does the That's fadeaway. An advantage. Yeah, they're gonna have to say, like, look, uh, you're gonna have to bun it up 
or we're going to treat you like you work at a cookie factory. We're going to put a net yeah, on it. Caps. Like we're, we're going to have yeah. to do something. But you just can't have bigger and bigger hair just flying, flying this everywhere. Point, that hair, as you saying, is the six six man on the court. It's the six man. <laughs> That's right. That hair is the six the six man. You're going to have to do something with it. Like I don't think. Let's say um, I don't think the UFC. Like the women in the UFC will have it braided up mm-hmm. and knotted up and tied down. Like yeah. you couldn't be on top of somebody doing the ground and pound with your hair hanging over their face. Right. Well, that's a right? disadvantage, right? To have your hair flopping around. Well, you can't grab the hair. Mm. So it would be if you could grab it, but you can't grab it. But it would be a huge advantage if. You're just you've got guard on someone, you've got mount on someone, and you're just leaned over them and you're ground and pound oh. and they just got a face full mm-hmm. of your hair. Yeah. They can't even tell where that shit's coming from. Yeah. So they got rules. I think they got hair rules in the UFC. Mm. Uh they're gonna have to institute the hair rules in the WNBA and in college and, and beyond, because it's getting it's getting out of control now. Yeah. hmm Um, so in Atlanta, Donald Trump, he went to a Chick fil A. Oh yeah, and he he uh, ordered some food for his supporters. Thirty milkshakes, lots of chicken. We have him ordering right here. The, the staff is can you, uh, chicken sandwiches, right? I, I can do, you order chicken there? You can order like oh, you can get tenders or whatever. Uh, yeah, nuggets, tenders. What's the best shake flavor, Daphne? I would say strawberry. Ooh, mm. that means you like you like sweet. Mm, a little sweet. I had banana one time. I was like, I don't get it. This mm. shouldn't be a shake. I agree. I I would have said vanilla when I was a kid, and then I moved to chocolate, but I never got to strawberry. Mm. I always thought it tasted fake or weird or something. I don't know. Ooh, I love it. You love strawberry. Especially, have you ever had it with real strawberries? No, oh. but I would do that. Mm. Where do you get that? Um, it was a place that made it out in Jersey with real strawberries. What do you got, Chris, in the shake department? Uh, I'm going to go with vanilla just because, I, I mean, it's it's enjoyable. I know it sounds boring, but vanilla is a flavor. You it's, know what's a good shake? You can't find You're not going to be able to get it. You got to go to like Swenson's or some ice cream place, mm. you know, some place that does them. Sarsaparilla. What? Okay. It tastes like root beer, but it's a shake. That's it's, better than root beer float. It, it, the root beer mm. floats, fat, I say to that. <laughs> but it's the consistency of a shake. But it's like a root beer shake. Wow. That's I never killer. had heard of that at all. I yeah. used to get the Coke Slurpee. So mm, I like soda yeah. flavored yeah. frozen drinks anyway. Mm-hmm. At In N Out, you can do a Neapolitan. Mm. What's that? That's vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Oh. oh. A suicide. Oh. Suicide. Yeah. But you know, like the ice cream, the white, pink, and yeah. brown ice cream. Yeah, I could, I, I could do that. Eventually, it just tastes sweet, though. You don't taste the flavor. But I could do a 50 50 chocolate vanilla. Yeah. All right. Um, so oh, we ordered it, 30 shakes. Oh, yeah. Here, here we can watch the video. It's mm-hmm. I love how he orders with his hands all the time. Yeah. It's campaigning. Yeah. Oh. Schmoozing. Schmoozing. He is a schmoozer. The local Chick fil A. Um, so there's this guy. It's, it's, it's this crazy story. So there's this guy. His name's William Woods. He's homeless. He's living in LA. And, uh, and then he goes to the bank, his bank, and he finds out that somebody's been racking up debt using his name. He's homeless, but he goes to he his bank. bank. Yeah, he has a bank still. That he's, I mean, homeless he's, people, they have they have cell phones. They have okay. They, I'm sure they have bank accounts. They All just, right, so he goes to his bank, and they're like, "Hey, somebody's been racking up debt under your name." Not so this is dead. Yeah. So he reports his concerns to the manager at the bank, um, and they say they think this guy is not really him. They think he's faking. Uh, being William Woods, because mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. like, oh no, we got the other guy had ID, the other guy had everything. So it turns out his identity was stolen. So this guy gets um, charged. The homeless for, guy. The homeless guy for identity mm-hmm. theft. Mm-hmm. And the guy who stole his identity was like an old co worker. Of right? his, yeah. of the homeless guy. Of the homeless guy. Wow. Yeah. So 
So this homeless guy faces up to uh, 32 years in prison. Poor oh, no, little sorry, frog. Sorry, sorry the, the guy, who's, he got caught, so he's facing up to 32 okay. years in prison. But he was in jail. The homeless guy was in jail for a while. And um, this guy ends up taking this identity. He gets married. He has kids under this name. What? He's like, yeah, so he's living this lie. While this guy who's homeless is like, no, I'm really William Woods. And the judge doesn't believe him. They're like, he's crazy. Put, uh-huh. him in the mental, put him in the mental institution. Mm-hmm. And they, they um, don't believe him at all. Uh, yeah, so eventually he gets caught. The guy admits, yeah, I stole his identity. And um, It's crazy. They even now, favor. Yeah, now they're going to let... This looked like him on cocaine. They're going to let the original William <laughs> Woods out. I don't know what he gets for, for being in prison. Why are you no. stealing a homeless guy's identity? Shouldn't you step it up the food chain a little? Well, he was able to use the his ID to get a job at a university oh, and wow. get and get loans through credit unions in the uh, totaling over two hundred thousand wow. dollars. So he's just getting loans. All right, that was worth taking the identity two hundred thousand dollars. That's a good amount. I uh, I had a conversation with my daughter yesterday, which is uh, an interesting full circle mm-hmm. situation. Then uh, she's a senior in high school, and. I keep asking my kids who are twins who are both seniors in high school, what about the awards? Because the yearbook's coming out. When I grew up, you had best eyes, best hair, most mm. athletic, you know what I mean? Anything, best right? whatever. Yeah, they still do. Oh. I only bring it up so I can bring up me being class clown. Ah, oh, I see. I, I, oh, wow. I, I always bring it up and then I go, you know your dad? And then I go, yeah, yeah. Heard it a lot. <laughs> but they have a class clown. And they have, uh, you know, I don't know, most likely to, you know, whatever. They've softened it up a little. They don't have best titties and hot, hottest oh, ass. and I all that. never oh. had that when I was in school. Well, <laughs> they hate. Listen, best when I was in. Titties? <laughs> well, titties? Well, hold on. When I was in junior high, they had best physique, best body. Okay, okay. I can you're see about a ninth, body. But you're talking about a 14-year-old girl, <laughs> and they're going best bod. Yeah. Like, she's wearing tight pants and a tight shirt, and you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's her. That's her. And the dude, too. They had, the, they had best body, best physique, you know, best looking. Mm-hmm. They didn't hold anything back, unlike Dove. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm saying to my daughter, I go, how's it going? Any 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 awards in the Corolla household? We win anything? And she goes, uh, well, um, I was up for two things. And then they chose for me because I won two things. Oh, the you can only win staff, one now. Yeah, chose for me. And I got senioritis. <laughs> I said, that sounds like a venereal disease. I go, what, uh, what's senioritis? And she goes... Uh, it's most likely to not want to be there your yeah. senior year. Oh, yes, and uh, and I was like, "What? That's a that's not, you know, that's not a that a boy. That's a slap in the face. Yeah. That's like backhanded I, compliment." I, what if they did that like at the workplace? Who's employee who's least likely to want to show up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, give him a plaque. Oh, he's not here. <laughs> right. So she goes, "Well, I won senior I I won senioritis, but I also won." best friends like her and her friend you mm-hmm. know best couple best buddies mm-hmm. you know whatever whatever that whatever that thing is she goes i wanted that one but they just made a decision and gave me the senior eyes one which is embarrassing and i don't want that one and then they gave best buddies to some other pair of girls that no one's ever heard of and never seen them hanging out this is defamation and i i, I mm-hmm. it is and it goes in the yearbook and 30 years from now when you open the yearbook you go oh yeah. I said, you know what? Let's sue. Your dad got <laughs> screwed, too, in the exact same way. I said, uh, when when I was in high school, I uh, played football, played offense, and I played defense. People used to play both ways, or mm-hmm. some of us played both ways back then. And I ended up winning best defensive player on defense. I didn't win best defensive line, best defensive back. I just won best defensive player because I led the team in tackles. Mm. They said, when the yearbook came by, they said, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take a picture of the starting offense. So I said, starting offense, go out there. We'll take a picture. They took it. Then they said, now we're going to take a picture of the defense. I said, okay. Started walking over for that picture. Said, no, no. One person per picture. I go, but... 
I led the team in tackles and got best defensive player. Yeah, no, no. Your backup is going to be standing in the position for eternity in the yearbook what? is starting at inside linebacker for North Hollywood High. And the guy who had the most tackles is not going to be pictured on the defensive side of the ball. And I go, well, first off, I had a choice. I'd rather just do it on the defense. I didn't even like playing offense. Yeah. I'd, I'll take defense. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Probably no, we're doing offense. Right. So I said to my, my daughter, I go, your dad got the exact same thing 40 years ago. It's exactly the exact same thing. Curse. You won two things. They gave you the one you didn't want, and they bumped you out of the other one you did win because they said you couldn't take home two. Get used to it. Mm, that's life. That's life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the homeless guy spent like 500 days locked up. And now he's <laughs> yeah, he's out. homeless. Who yeah. cares? Is he going to be able to sue? I would say so. Everyone's able to sue. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, the so new world order. The NYPD... They're taking a new step to fight illegal parking using a new tool called a barnacle mm. on the windshield. Mm. Yes. Is that the bust so the window? Instead of the boot, it's the like boot. Yeah, it's like this piece that just covers your windshield and sucks on and locks onto it. Wow. And so you, you just you won't be able to see, so you're not gonna be able to drive. I mean, I guess you stick your head out the window. The Denver boot, some people will like saw it off or take the rim off or drive off with it on the car or whatever whatever it is. But the barnacle. The barnacle. So I don't know how you do that. We'll we'll put it we'll put a picture. Your up. dad would love the barnacle. He's a seaman. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love to get the barnacle. Okay. Yeah. So they put it on your they windshield. Put it on your windshield and then it just prevents you from Seeing, so how are you going to drive? I mean, maybe go in reverse. I don't know. Oh, listen. People will find a way. There are ways. I oh, know. There are actually people online already saying there's a way to get it off. You have to uh, defrost your windshield and then just get a credit card and just stick it underneath the suck and you can pry the thing off. I feel like I could drive with a barnacle on my windshield. Uh, but I got to see it. Is there a picture of it somewhere? Yeah, Byron will put it up. Byron will put barnacle, it up. Barnacle, uh, NYPD. Yeah. Now, in, um, I think it was in a James Bond movie, but it also may have been in the movie Gator, Mm. the Burt Reynolds movie, where there was a giant man and, uh, like, the giant guy Jaws from from 007. Oh, wow. Um, He drove uh, with his head out the sunroof. So I feel like I could drive with my head out, out the sunroof. There are ways around this. Yeah. And I feel like in maybe like at least a couple of months, you remember the girls who went viral on TikTok because they had a key to the boots, a master key, and they could unlock people's boots. And you just call them and they would come do it. And that oh, went viral really? On TikTok. So pretty soon somebody would come up with something for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like well, I said, eh, according to, to the NYPD, drive. they say this makes it impossible to drive. Wow. Well, it doesn't make it impossible to start it, put it in gear, and move. It makes it impossible <laughs> to see. Yeah. But somebody's going to hit somebody, and then somebody's going to sue somebody. And uh, all right, but okay, the uh, the boot and the barnacle. Yeah. Nice. Um, so there, uh, more adults are being held responsible for kids. Uh, who are like in school shootings? So yeah. we, you know, you, we we covered James and Jennifer Crumbly, who uh, were sentenced to ten to fifteen years. Yeah, and then the uh, former assistant principal at a Virginia elementary school has been charged with felony child neglect. Uh, more than a year after a six-year-old boy brought a gun to class and shot his first-grade teacher, mm. so looks like we're now holding the adults responsible. Well, look, I, I've been yelling about this for a million years. You're responsible for your dog. If you let your dog out, your dog bites somebody. somebody, that's your dog. He, you, They're responsible for it. When you make stuff people's problem and responsible and held responsible, they magically smarten up and they sober up and they make better decisions. The problem with this is it's going to have to spread out. It can't just be kids going to schools shooting mm-hmm. people, it's got to be 13-year-old gangbangers running around on Tuesday nights at 4 in the morning shooting people, too. Where Where's the parents? And that's when the controversy's mm. going to kick in, because somebody's going to go, all right, fine, parents are responsible. Now, what about your kid running around the streets in the middle of the night shooting people? Aren't you responsible? Then there'll be a big argument about that. So that's what we can look forward to. But yes, you make yourself... you. You put that onus on the parent, mm-hmm. they 
sober up. Like they start getting responsible. They start getting smart. They start looking through the kids room. It, it's, it's human nature. You don't want to be locked up. Like A, you don't want your kid to shoot anything up, but B, you're on the hook. I mean, like I said, you got a dog that bites people and the UPS guy hits the doorbell and you're going to get sued if the dog bites the UPS guy. You go put the dog in the, you, you put him in the spare bedroom and shut the door. Yeah. You just do. That, yeah. that's, pe- that's human nature. So good. Yeah. It's fine. God, um, could you imagine being a school teacher or principal or counselor like in today's world? No. Oh. No. Absolutely not. Those kids will beat your ass. Oh, my God. Oh, They'll throw man. down. Then the parents yeah. will come in and start yelling at you. Then you'll get... I, I, and then now you can go to jail because the kid brought the gun? The six-year-old? Yeah. It's crazy. What would you... But would you rather be a cop in today's world or if a school teacher? If I had to teacher? choose? Yeah. Probably a cop. I'd Probably a rather cop. be a yeah, cop. I would. Wow, that's a sad state of affairs. Yeah, I don't know a kid that's not afraid of you. That's a, that's a big deal. That's good. that's tough. I mean, there's so yeah. many videos of kids just squaring up with with, with teachers. teachers. It's crazy, and but they square up with cops too. At least a cop has a baton, a mace, and a gun. And it's nobody, like at, at being a teacher, you have no. You know, nothing can to you fight defend back? yourself. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they get fired for fighting back. Yeah. All right. We're going to hell in the basket. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Natasha Hensrich out there. Okay, sure. So um, this happened last week. It was just a really close call. I know, Adam, you, you have a construction background, so this is, a, mm-hmm. this is a pretty crazy thing. So in Oregon, this guy was walking into a, a tool shop, mm-hmm. and it, there, there's security footage of this. So he's just walking mm-hmm. in, and there's a construction site nearby. Mm-hmm. And at, right after he walks in, a saw blade just launches. Oh, I into saw this. The door. Oh yeah. my god, he just, just made seconds. it by seconds. Like, yeah, yeah, he would have totally gotten hit. Yeah, he, the you know wow. interviews. Does anyone know what kind of saw blade that is? Definitely Mike Myers. Um, it's a uh, wet concrete. saw. That's right, diamond blade, wet saw. Wow. That's for cutting concrete. There's no, uh, by the way, the thing's three foot by three foot or something, three foot around or 32 inches around or something. That's a concrete wet saw that, you know, push along the ground and, you know, cutting up the sidewalk. That's where it came loose. But this is a freak accident or is this something that you just have to monitor? Uh, I've never seen a, so concrete guys and coring guys, they call them, are kind of a farmed out separate thing. Uh, It's not like the guys on the construction site would show up with a giant wet saw that you hook up to a hose with a 30-inch diamond blade. That's all farmed out. Coring guys is the round stuff and the concrete cutting guys. Different softball teams. Different different group farmed out. So someone's pushing it along Mm. the ground. You're pushing it kind of like you're pushing a lawnmower, but it's got a big thing and there's water. It's hooked up to a hose, and it's a wet saw, and at some point, something breaks on the hub or the spindle or something, and the thing just goes just goes firing out. And it would have jacked him up, but not jacked up like a big blade from a lumber mill, which has jagged, you know, like oh. shark teeth on it, you know. The wet saw, this is like diamond impregnated. That's why it's not really hooked. You know, yeah. you wouldn't, if you took a diamond blade, to cut concrete and you just rubbed your hand over the top of it, it wouldn't cut your hand. Like it mm-hmm. would if it was a wood saw right. blade. It's little bits of diamonds. People use I the industrial application for diamonds is much greater than, you know, the engagement ring department. Yeah, but that's Mr. Speed is crazy. Oh, yeah, so that's it's two feet into the wall, took yeah, three men to remove it. That's uh yeah, that's uh crazy. That's awesome. Are you do you um have any of those saws that just like the slightest bit of heat or moisture just dips right back into the? Uh, I've always wanted to use that. It's a crazy thing. I've always been scared to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course. They have a they have them for table saws, for contractor mm. saws, where you're pushing something through. They do the test where they touch a hot dog a hot to dog, it, yeah. and it it doesn't dip in. It it blows itself up. Wow. It breaks like it literally has to break. Yeah. So meaning, you could take. A table saw, what we call a contractor saw, and with a 10-inch 60-tooth carbide tip blade, Duh. and you could fire it up, and you could push your finger into it, mm. and right when it touched your flesh, 
right when it nicked Oof. it. Boom! It would just break. It just it makes a break sound. Yeah. Now, uh, I would never have the guts to do no. it. But on the other hand, if if I was nineteen and you offered me one hundred and fifty dollars, I would do it. One hundred and fifty. You please when tell me 19. it's like the like well, gas the was only a, gas was fifty thousand. Gas was only a dollar a gallon back then, sweetheart. You oh know, yeah, you could have got a lot of places. Could have got a lot of put, got a lot of places. Boom! They just touch it with oh, that. Oh no! No, I was always bad. I was always the guy who didn't even. Um, I wouldn't even use. You know, when you're pushing stuff through the table saw and you got the fence and there's mm-hmm. only two inches between the blade and the fence, you're supposed to use like a push stick. Mm-hmm. I would just use my hand and just, mm, uh, you know, I did a lot of free handing, like dangerous, weird, dangerous, yeah. weird stuff. It's like the mandolin in the kitchen. You ever use a mandolin? Mm-mm. Oh, it's terrifying. You, you slice your hand, you don't even realize it. Oh, there's a mandolin? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know That's what a Rod Stewart oh. song, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's also a musical instrument, but... Oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's 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 crazy. I did a lot of stupid stuff. I, I got away relatively un, unscathed. But uh, the the other th- oh, I see the mandolin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I did, what I was thinking about the other day is I was busting up a sidewalk once out front of uh, the Pier One Imports on Wilshire Boulevard in Santa Monica, and they gave me the big ninety pound air jack jackhammer. The electric ones are like, mm-hmm. bing, 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 but the big ones have the compressor. And they, put, man, they got a hose and they go, they make a weird sound. And you go, and it, and they give you the, I think it's the spade, the spear tipped one. And you get the 90 pound check. And I was just like, I went all the way down. I buried it all the way into the sidewalk. And then you go, huh. Huh? And it, it ain't going nowhere. Oh, it, it won't come back out? It's Excalibur sword in there. <laughs> like, it goes down 10 inches, 12 inches, and it's bare. If you don't stop, you got to go down three inches and break it up. Uh, go down three inches and break uh, it up. You go, burp. You go down the yeah, ground. You're locked in. It's in the sidewalk. And then wow. you look like the biggest ass in the world because you're trying to pull it out with the thing. It ain't going. So then you have to detach it from the jackhammer, lay the jackhammer down, and start banging on it with oh. a hammer and just keep banging, like trying to jiggle it around. And, you're, and everyone's just watching Shame. you laying down on the ground, <laughs> just banging on this thing because you just drove it right in the <laughs> sidewalk and you can't get it out. Mm. That's my sidewalk story. <laughs> All right. Uh, Natasha Henstridge is out there. Uh, Daphne Springs, Ooh. stand-up special Daphne Springs. Single female, very funny. Recommended highly. Thank you. Available on YouTube. Come by anytime you like, Daphne. Yeah, I'm close. Oh wow. yeah, that's right. You're in the valley somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come by Please. and uh, say hi. Uh, I think we'll do some made-up movie. Let's do it with uh, Natasha Henstridge, yep. and we'll do all that right after this. Rosetta Stone. Oh, my kids are heading off to college soon, and uh, I'm sure they're going to want to do a little travel. So we're all going to have to learn a new language. And uh, if they're going to go somewhere, they should learn it and learn it from Rosetta Stone, the most trusted language learning program there is available on desktop or as an app. It truly immerses you in the language you're learning. 30 years, millions of users, 25 languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Arabic. It just keeps going. Designed for long term retention. No English translations. Learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Plus, the built-in true accent feature gives you feedback on your pronunciations. Lifetime membership has all 25 languages for 50% off. So work your brain out. Learn a language. Use Rosetta Stone. Right, Dawson? Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, Adam Carolla Show listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash Adam. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash Adam today. The Adam Carolla Show presents Natasha Henstridge's birthday cocktail party for August 15th. Let's see who's here. Well, first up is French military leader and emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte. Let's welcome the first governor of British Columbia, James Douglas. 
first lady of American theater and member of the Barrymore family of actors, Ethel Barrymore. Here's the drummer for the Spencer Davis group, Peter York. Former NFL guard from the Oakland Raiders, Gene Upshaw. Here's original Doobie brother, Tom Johnston. Let's welcome heavy metal drummer, Tommy Aldridge. The guy who wrote The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Stieg Larson, just showed up. Here's the senator from Pennsylvania. Let's welcome John Fetterman. Ben Affleck just joined the party. Hey, it's Jennifer Lawrence. And Bill Gates' ex-wife, Melinda Gates. Natasha Henstridge is on The Adam Carolla Show. Cinderella's Revenge is the name of the movie. It's available in theaters April 26th, and we'll talk about that. Good to see you, Natasha. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Always like talking to you and playing made-up movies. Are you sure? Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Yeah, because you're uh, Canadian nice. I am normally, but I got up early this morning and I'm feeling bratty today. I'm not even going to lie. How does that happen? I just, you know, if there's been a strike, there's been COVID, I don't get up early anymore. So when I get up at 5.30, I get a little bratty these days. That's it. I'm a brat. Is there a thing uh, I've been noticing in myself as I get older? They say as you get older, you need less sleep. I feel like I like more sleep as I get older. I feel like they say that you need less sleep because your sleep is broken up all night long these days. And I don't know if it's from snoring boyfriends or hormones or what the hell's going on, but Mm. I don't sleep through the night anymore. So now I feel like I need to sleep in in the morning because I wake up at 2 till 4.30 or something. It's like I have these weird sleeping patterns, you know, like two or three hours at a time. So... I I do, I have to say, like a lot of my friends that are older, my boyfriend's older, he needs way less sleep than I do. Is he a snorer? He's a little bit of a snorer until I give him a good boot in the back and then he behaves again for a while. I, I flip him over to his side and stuff. I sound, see how bratty I am today? I'm like, it, normally I'd be like, too. normally I'm like, over. Yeah. I gently, honey, can you move over? Now it's a boot in the back. When I'm tired <laughs> and bratty, it's just get over there. <laughs> yeah, you know what I would say to the ladies about me snoring is you, you've you been ignoring that inflate your tires on your dashboard of your car for a year and a half. How about ignoring just a little bit of my snoring? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm... Just I'm, do what you do with your dashboard no. when it's telling you to inflate your tires. That is so true, by the way. That is yeah, so true. I, every I'd woman rather, I know can ignore that dashboard for at least a year, but can't do five minutes of the ace man totally, snoring. Totally. Well, I'd rather drive on a side on an angle and like have like a bump driving down the road than sound stuff. The sound is just... Whoo. So, and I also think, you know, my, my premise is that women are angrier than men and i i here's what i think i think when the average woman is awoken by her man snoring there's a sharp shot to the ribs Mm. i feel like with the guys it's a little more of a gentle nudge Mm. does that sound right i'm not a snorer so Mm -hmm. i don't know the answer to that but i will say within like every year it was like baby, can you, do you mind, huh, sweetie? Mm-hmm. And it turned from that into like a knee and propping him up on the side. And a couple nights ago, I went, sorry, that's it. I'm going to have to smother you. Yeah. And I held a pillow over his head <laughs> and I said, it's time to be smothered. And he's like, no, no. Who, <laughs> so are, the people, <laughs> who are the people who are the snoring deniers? Those are the people. Oh, totally. Jimmy Kimmel would be a snoring design. I used to spend a lot of time in bed with Jimmy, and I'd go, I'd wow. wake him up, and I'd go, you're snoring, and he'd go, I don't snore. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, that makes me the worst person in the world. Is this if you it- really think about it, if I'm just waking you, ran- you're sleeping quietly, yeah. and I'm waking you up for no reason in the middle of the night to accuse you of something you didn't do, that makes me a bad person. <laughs> right, right. If you really want to be yeah. deconstructed. Compl- totally denial. But why yeah. were you sleeping with Jimmy Kimmel a lot? Is that a whole nother? Oh, on the road and stuff, doing comedy uh, stuff or something, or was we, it sexual? W- what was it? It, it? it took a turn for yeah, of for course. the sexual, it of course. Does. But we it we does. we used to work for the same radio station. Radio stations are notoriously cheap, cheap. like mm-hmm. insanely cheap. Like here's how cheap radio stations are. I have my agent, uh, B- James Baby Doll Dixon, was in, in charge of Jimmy and Stephen Colbert. And John Stewart and Carson Daly, and they all did stuff like when you go to the Jimmy show, they'd have a full open bar. Yeah. They'd have sushi it's laid awesome. out on the bar. You know, the whole mm. the whole 
Nine yards, pardon the pun, we'll get into that. <laughs> or Colbert, whatever, John Stewart. Uh, but he's not a radio, he's not a radio agent, you know, but but he's my agent. So then when I took over for Howard Stern on all the West Coast affiliates, he did the deal. Mm-hmm. And then one day he gets this call from the program director and the guy's pissed off. And he's like, uh, baby doll, yeah, your guy wants peanut butter. <laughs> and he's like, what? He wants us to supply a jar of peanut butter in the in the fridge, in the kitchen, the community kitchen, so him and his morning crew could have some peanut butter. This is way out of line. It's We're not going to pay for it. And my agent called me. He's like, I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about. The peanut butter? He's upset about peanut butter. He's got the fully... They fully catered lunches for the entire lunch for the entire writer staff and the entire crew every single day the the week and this guy's going nuts off a thing of Skippy for six dollars so once a week or once every two weeks and I said baby that's baby doll baby doll that is radio <laughs> get get used to radio man well you guys have slim jims and Doritos and really fine coffee here thank so. you and I just ate two slim jims I'm not and, even gonna lie and we didn't even so <laughs> when the radio stage would send us out we go on the road they would they just get one room for me and Jimmy oh. half the time so you know shared we'd, bed we'd be yeah you couldn't always get double beds like two beds in the room uh, we go to Vegas we'd end up Doing drugs and putting doing four guys in one room, and we double up on the bed, and you it's know, just so dirty. It's dirty what you're talking about. I was trying to explain to my daughter uh, <laughs> yesterday that when I moved out, I I lived in a. I said I, was, I said to my daughter, "Listen, you're moving out soon enough." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Here's your problem. You're going down. You live in 7,300 square foot of luxury over here. You're going into an apartment. Mm-hmm. I lived in a shack with one bathroom. I'm, I moved up. Mm-hmm. When, when I moved out, I moved over. I didn't move down. Yeah. I, I lived in a shack. I moved to a shack. But I slept on a futon with a dude in one bedroom on the same futon for two years. Character building yeah. stuff. I agree. <laughs> no, it's character building. Honestly, I came from less and built up really nicely and raised my kids pretty well they had a really good life and then i lost and spent a lot of money and so then they had to go now they have to like fend for themselves sorry kids so you grew up you grew up in canada right (laughs) that's building character though yeah i did i did yeah and then you start modeling at 14 i did i went to paris when i was 14 i yeah yeah ended up going to europe is that too much for a 14 year old i would say it's probably the reason i'm feeling like a brat today you know, mm-hmm. you no know parental guidance from 14 on. <laughs> no, I um, I think I handled it and dealt with it really well, but I wouldn't recommend it mm-hmm. for most people. Do you go I to like a modeling a house? Or I was not a crazy kid. I was not, I'm like, I wanted to be home at midnight even when I was, you know, 18 years old and free. You know, I mm-hmm. just, I lived in a model's apartment. I lived in Paris and, yeah, and traveled all around Europe and New York and, Models apartments mostly, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't get. Do they? They don't have enough good-looking people in Paris to, you know, we have to, have to out outsource. <laughs> you know, what I mean, fourteen-year-olds from Canada <laughs> trip, or the it? United States or Florida or something like. If don't they you import beautiful they ta- people? Yeah, don't you got enough good-looking? You guys, this Paris. You don't have enough good-looking fourteen-year-olds. I know. Here? It's it's an, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is a funny point. I think it's just there's certain fashion industry cent, you know centers in the world, and Paris is one of them. New York is obviously one of them, um, and so they are going for the best of the best and trying to find the next big thing. And you know they're trying to get you know the most amazing girls. You're right. There's beautiful women in all of these places. So to begin with, for you, sure. <laughs> you go out there. You start modeling. When does that acting kick in? So I, mo- I, I acted, be- I never acted on, you know, in anything, <laughs> but in my mind, I was an actress before I ever started modeling because I mm-hmm. was doing theater and school productions and, oh, okay. you know, that kind of thing as mm-hmm. a kid. Right. Um, and then, so I left Paris, went to New York, started doing TV commercials and then started studying acting in New York and started auditioning. And I auditioned, Species was the fourth audition, so... I got and that's of, a big breakout? That was a big, yeah. I mean, at the time that I did the movie, I was like, wow, cool. I'm going to do a film at one point in my life. This is it. This is the point. I did not know it was going to lead to you know, what it led to. So, Were you 19? Yeah, I think I, I always try to do the math. I think eight, 19, I think. I think I was a 19. And that's the first big break. I'm bad at math. 
And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. then when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about the way in whole nine yards, right? And uh, Matthew Perry, mm. obviously, in that. Mm. Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan in that. So everyone's passing away. So awful. No, it's, it's so... I mean, talk about... Go from a light interview to, like, stabbing yeah, in the sorry. gut. Jeez, Adam. That's we well, yeah, it's, That's it, how we do it here. We keep it, you guessing. Wow, jeez Louise. No, it's really bizarre. I actually went to one of those signing conventions a couple of weeks ago, um, and so many people are fans of the whole nine yards, and looking at the photo with exactly that. Michael Clark Dun- Duncan, Matthew Perry was just such a shock, such a shock, and obviously Bruce is, you know, retired and not doing well health-wise and stuff, so it's... At some point, you start feeling really old, right? Like you just see so many people around you and their life and the directions their lives go, and and it's just it's sad. And I'm also super grateful to be here. And yeah, the other movie I forgot you were in was uh, Jean Claude Van Damme's Maximum Risk, mm-hmm. which uh, I have a a genre or sorry category of movies where i feel like they came up with the title before they came up with the movie <laughs> and maximum risk may be one where they came up with the title first but if you can find it chris actually not it was called something else when i was filming it oh that. really mm-hmm. you had a working title and then they called it maximum risk yeah. well you're one of the few people i could talk to and get the skinny <laughs> on that mm-hmm. uh, uh, it, it was originally known as the exchange and then it was retitled to bloodstone I think oh, I saw this. Bloodstone. I remember it being Bloodstone. I the think, Exchange, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I saw it in the theaters. 96. He's fighting his twin brother. Was that true? Yeah. What's, the, a, what's the slug line on God, that, was the, on twin, that movie? the twin brother was Double Impact, wasn't it? That was him as a twin. But, oh, oh, maybe no. that's Double no, Impact. No, double Team. Think, double double Team. Double. All right. That came up that's the title awesome. of that movie <laughs> <laughs> before the... So Maximum Risk. While seeking answers to the to the death of the twin brother he never knew he oh, had, oh, uh-huh. you're good. a you're French good. cop and his sibling's fiance find themselves pursued by corrupt FBI agents and the Russian mafia. And are you Jean Claude's uh, love interest in that movie? I was indeed. How is Jean Claude to work with? Jean Claude and I had a blast together. We actually had a really good time. We 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 had a lot of fun. I mean, he's French, and we were filming in the south of France, and you know they had. He was always going to the gym over, and his lifestyle was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I always felt like he was much more into producing and the overall stuff and training and all of that stuff, much more so than wow, I look pretty bratty and mean there too, don't I? Dang. Um, but I thought I always thought he was more interested in that than the acting part um, uh-huh. of things. But we had a blast together. Honestly, we actually dated for a very brief time during filming. Oh, it really? Was like an on-set romance kind of moment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we had fun. Well, he's a, a specimen, and I would I would count you as a specimen as well. So it Thank seems you. makes sense that you two would. Find some mutual specimen love. We were young, and you were spending three months together, and we're yeah. traveling, and we had a nice time. He was he was a sweet guy, but I but I didn't know. I'm so out of the drug scene, but I, he was having issues. I think during that time, but that mm-hmm. were hidden from me, and I think kind of things went a little sideways after that. And I didn't know at the time, but um, people people told me. But he's he's a lovely. He's Jean Claude's got a really good heart. I think. Did he's, you he's have a boyfriend back in the United States at the time? Probably. Oh. No, I didn't. Come on. No, no, I didn't. little cheating? No, no, not at all. Mm-hmm. No, no. Mm-hmm. Do you think I'd be saying that on the radio right now? <laughs> the, no, I don't, I don't know. You know, we're past this. I'm not this that stupid. Come on. Statute of limitations. I mean, it's been, right. it's been a long, right. it's been long enough. You right. know? No, I was I was um, I was single at the time. That's, we wouldn't blame you either. Way. I mean, he no. might have been with, he might have been fully with somebody, and I was completely naive to that, though. I don't know. I don't think so. But listen. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I do women cheat as much as men, and then are, are men completely naive to that? That's the question. I think it's really dependent upon a lot of different factors. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, um, I don't think they cheat as much as men, because recently I've had a bunch of conversations with male friends of mine about... You know, cheating and or online cheating or what is cheating? Is you know, flirty text cheating? Is this you know what what what? 
And and so many of the men that I spoke to gave so much grace to like flirty texts is not cheating, Instagram people that you don't really know is not cheating. And I'm like, bullshit. It's all completely, you know, breaking your trust on some level. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, so I I don't know. I mean, I have to say, like back in when I was younger, I think there was probably a little more carelessness about that kind of thing, you know, when I wasn't married and I when I when I wasn't married and I wasn't living and traveling and doing all that kind of stuff, I was probably a little more What about laid dreams? Back. What about dream cheating? I had a I had a <gasps> Some dream. Of the best I had a, cheating is in dreams. Oh my god. I had a crazy one last <laughs> night. Did you? Yeah. I was I was I was hiking around Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne's house. Oh boy. It was like, a, but it, but for somehow it used to be my old house or something. But it's lots of stairways and lots of carpet and lots of stuff and lots of stairways that just ended. Like, oh man, I could have fallen off there. And then I was, uh, then I was walking on another stairway and it just sort of like ended again. I fell, but only like six foot. But I landed on my back and I was laying there on my back, going like, oh man. And next, you know, Megan Kelly's coming up to me, oh. <laughs> and she's. She's going like, oh, are, are you okay? And I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm okay. And she's like kissing but kind of my cheek, but too, for too long. Like it's going on for a while. So it starts off as a comfort kiss, but then. Yeah, and it just kind of stays there. She and has it's a just, maternal energy. She just like, it. keeps yeah. kissing me, and, I'm just, and she's getting kind of closer to my lips. And I'm, I'm <laughs> laying there. And, and then I woke up, and I was like. Well, I think I'm doing Megan Kelly's show on Friday, so that that explains that. that. But maybe I'm thinking and she's about gorgeous too. Come on, but I may have been thinking about you a little, Natasha, because you're very beautiful. You guys are striking and blonde, and, and sort of Megan have Kelly. the same yeah, features, you know. So maybe I had you mind. somewhere in the back of my head I appreciate with this that. this kissy dream. I don't know where the hell the Osbournes. Thanks for making me feel attractive. Came too. in. Oh, you guys. Thank you. You guys are <laughs> just, quite the the blonde bookends, you yeah, know. Yeah, she's a she's a beautiful woman, no doubt about it. She's cool, and um, she. And I think, I think both of you have a thing where you're beautiful blonde women, but you have some a lot of dude think in you. Like I, Megan Kelly thinks like a dude. Mm -hmm. She got dude mm -hmm. think. Which, I have a lot of masculine energy for sure. You do right. Yeah. yeah like definitely. do you like. You know, watching the ball game or the UFC None fight or any of that. that. that what, what is not the not in that way? How at does all. it manifest no. itself? The masculine energy. Um, I think actually, for many years of my life, that the male thinking compartmentalized. Don't you know? I wasn't overly emotional. That's kind of changed over years. I have to say, definitely, I've softened up with time. But I think in that way, I'm also when you think of masculine or male energy, I think of like. I'm a doer, get it done, logical thinking, get stuff. I'm very emotional too, but these days. But, right. But I'm a doer. I like to get stuff done. I'm very on top of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know, is that male? I don't, well, actually, uh, what it, I'm, I don't know if I'm actually describing I mean, a man right now at all. I'll come to think of it. Well, here's what we're talking about, I think. It's talking about stuff versus doing stuff. Like to me... The feminine energy is, is, and I'm always talking about it when we, you get the word salad, like we're all better when we come together and everyone has a seat at the table. And I'm like, homeless problem, homeless. What's the plan with the homeless? Mm. People need to be treated with dignity. Mm -hmm. They need to be treated with respect. They need to hold their head up. Mm -hmm. when they're not homeless, by the way. They're unhoused. It's like, stop talking. What is the plan? What is right, the plan? Right, and I, right. I, here's a little experiment that I've conducted with women in my life, mm -hmm. uh -oh. which I think makes this point. I think if you say to a woman, let's say you're in a relationship and you say to the woman, I'll just go with an antiquated example, but you go, oh, the cable's out. And then they got to call the cable guy and make an appointment to get the cable guy over to the house. And we got to get the cable hooked up or you moved into you, a new you're place. You're saying or this to a woman. Yeah. Okay. Saying this to a woman. So you go, you do this, I'm going to work, you know? Mm -hmm. And then at some point, a number of days will go by with no cable guy. Mm -hmm. And then most of the women I've been with, if I say to them, what's up with the cable guy? They go, I called him. Mm -hmm. And I go, and what happened? He never picked up. And then I go, all right, well, all right. And I go, okay, so you didn't do anything. And they go, no, I called him. 
And in their emotional world, it feels like something they was something. done. Wow. In my male-centric world, we are no closer to cable. Okay. We're still at a zero. Mm-hmm. You did something, but we're still mm-hmm. practically at a zero. And I think for women, there's an element that feels like they did something when they didn't do anything. That's the feminine emotional feels like you side. You are so canceled for this conversation. Right. The but so the can- male <laughs> side is if you call them or never call them or you were never born or he was never born, we're in the exact same spot as we were. Do you know something, though? Your example, for instance, is so identical to my girlfriend's. Mm-hmm. So my female friends, I have a very strong group of friends. They're so doers, strong personalities, blah, blah, blah. And all we do is complain about the fact that the guys never follow through, never finish the job, never show up in the way, you know? And, yeah. and so the exact opposite of what you're well, saying. Well, there's is a lot of dudes that are <laughs> thinking like chicks these days. Uh, the dudes have been ruined. Mm. There's no doubt. They're wearing <laughs> bracelets. Hey! Hey, what's wrong with a guy in a bracelet? I love that what's shit. What's right about it? <laughs> I mean, it's just dudes in bracelets. I don't, I don't know. What do you wear a bracelet for? Protection, memories, uh, prayer bracelets, beads. I, I'll on, say there's a lot of guys I like who do wear bracelets, but I do not like bracelets on on guys. It's up, it's up 150% from 25 years ago. Can I ask you something about your cable story real quick? Yes. Did the girl that you're talking about care if the TV was on or not? Not really. She didn't care. You wanted to watch your sports when and they, your stuff when and they things, care, and she didn't care. There's also, it is my $10,000 rule, which I can't stand, which when people go, I couldn't have time, I've been busy. I go, what if I said I'll give you $10,000? Know? They go, oh, yeah, I would have done it. It's like, all right, well, then, then it you can do it. You just didn't, job. You didn't, really, you didn't really care about it. Right. Yeah. Right. So your female friends are the ones that are going, my guys, I've been asking them to fix something around the house or do something. We or- all know what the, the man's talents are, right? Some guys don't have any fix it in them. They just mm-hmm. don't have that. And we know that. We know the ones. You know, I have a friend, whatever. I'm not going to say these names. <laughs> But she knows her guy doesn't do that, but he provides in a bunch of other ways, and he does a lot, bunch of other cool things. Would you guys like know. the Nobody's guy perfect. to Nobody. have fix-it in him? Oh, it's so sexy for a woman when she oh, has a guy with some going. fix-it in him. Yeah. Go. No, it is. There is something about it. It doesn't matter if he's supporting the world and the kids and the, the fact that he can do this thing or fix that thing or change the, hey. Mm. <laughs> no, there's absolutely something very, very cool about that we like that there is something in the wiring right still where there's something kind of attractive about that all right well let me give you so my you, my thing you don't know how to fix anything do you because you you're making faces and i'm just assuming you don't know how to fix anything i'm frustrated uh. all right so let me <laughs> all right, let me say something all right so i'm a journeyman carpenter who can build anything i want and fix anything i want and build any house and do anything i want and people prove it no. it's a lot of like people going hey, what makes you think you can listen i built a room onto my house and i put a lamborghini inside of my house damn i, I can did afford it. a lamborghini and i can afford to build the room yes so <laughs> and i know how to build the room <laughs> perfect but that's all i did is for a living because then i was a carpenter and that's that's all I did was build houses and and whatever. I built this studio, I built these offices, build whatever I want, do it do did it all you? day every day. Oh, okay. Okay. All day every day whatever. I'm I mean I'm busy and I travel and stuff I can't, but but I can. Mm-hmm. And it's not handy. It's journeyman carpenter which is different, different. than than 100%. handy. Yep. Cabinets. My dad. Metric stuff. Used to do that. Yeah. Every everything. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I do not know and haven't built. Mm-hmm. But um, which women say is sexy, except for none of the women I've ever been with. Because I think the magical power of a woman is to take whatever your skill set is and dismiss it. And dismiss it. <laughs> and want a different one, damn it. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. They want a different skill. It's all the, 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 the bigger picture is to break you down. At Aww. some point, but no, I. I don't think so. I've always I been a builder. A lot of things in men that I should have really looked harder for some other things. Here <laughs> is a picture of an office that I built above ground. 
I wow. built an elevator to put a Lamborghini Miura in it. I set all the pieces of glass. I ran all the track. I did the flooring. I built. It's a steel structure. Wow. I didn't. I didn't actually hang the uh, I beams. Right. But uh, every wow. single thing in this place, I built. I put a a, a bar <laughs> underneath my swimming pool with with portholes. That's pretty impressive. Into I'm, it, I'm, which I cored. Had somebody core farm mm-hmm. farmed it out. Yes, there's nothing. Women say to me all the time, like, oh, are you sure you could hang this picture or whatever? I go, yes, yes. But that's then that's you all, all I did. But then you also have to be good in bed. And you uh, also have to be Well, I farmed that out to the corn guy. <laughs> you don't snore, do you? Uh, right, snoring. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the windows in the pool were done by a concrete coring guy that we're just talking about. That's amazing. Put holes, and then I put glass in it, and then we made portholes so you could s- go down in the bar and look into the pool that's amazing that's cool i know ray because ray used to work you used to work yeah with ray, ray yeah, uh, yeah. helped well yeah. that's he used to help you with stuff and uh, well i helped him he helped. I, we, I mean, we, everyone just left yeah. high school and walked onto a construction site our, our modeling Is that opportunities you know were from, limited from back then? Was it? No, I met know? ray in football probably like i met ray in like the fifth or sixth grade Oh and then gosh. all of all the guys that were losers in high school got into construction. Right. So <laughs> when you when a guy's into construction, you think he's into construction. He's not into construction. He's he's unemployable Aww. in other in other jobs. <laughs> so so uh, we're looking at a picture of me and Ray from uh, so 1980. Wild. What yeah. A trip. Wow. Playing for North Hollywood High. Wild. B- back Wild. in the day, but. Uh, we just walked onto a construction site when we were like 18 or 19, and then my friends stayed in it, and then I worked my way out of it into comedy, but it took 13 years or something, wow. or 12 years or so something you, like that. But that's worked, what we did. That's all That's, that's all we did. You worked hard at it. You worked hard at getting out there then. Yeah. Doing what you loved. Well, what are getting you Getting off the sites. <laughs> you know how it's miserable that life is? I do. My whole... All of my dad's brothers are in the kind of world in that world. It's horrible in northern Canada. It's oh. hot here too, though. But up there, it's freezing, right? So you right. still have like the the elements are intense. Just imagine whatever job you have, it's always whatever the weather is. Yeah. No matter how so hot intended. or how cold or whatever it is, that's the temperature of your workplace. Yeah. No matter what. This is perfect in here, by the way. Perfect. Because when I built this space, <laughs> I put in some HVAC. You did, and yeah. I said it. It's really good. Thank you. Because I've been boiling. I was freezing in a studio earlier this morning. I went home, changed my clothes because I was so cold. Then it's eighty degrees out today, so it's so confusing. It's perfect. It's so perfect. you go. Uh, so you go from <laughs> modeling in Paris, or sorry, and then coming back, and then species, and then as soon as species hits, you're just off and running at that point. I mean, you kind of the I, it, I it girl. Here then I moved here. Yep, I moved to Los Angeles when I got that film and. I met everybody in town and was kind of, yeah, I was kind of like the new it girl, but really unprepared for that as well, <laughs> you know, just, yeah. So, yeah, but I moved here during that time, yeah. Uh, we got some made-up movie to play. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll take a, a quick break, and then we'll jump in on that. David from Texas, hang on, and we'll do that right after this. <laughs> It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Yo, Ace Man, this is Byron from Fort Worth, Texas. So, as the legendary debate continues on with the battle between home fries and hash browns, which we all know isn't uh, even really a debate because we know it's hash browns, I think we need to dive a little deeper down the, the hash brown rabbit hole. And we need to ask ourselves, is it ketchup? or salsa on the hash brown. And let me clarify, when I say salsa, I'm not talking like a Tabasco, I'm talking like a chunky style, chips and dip style. Uh, I say ketchup all day, every day. The wife thinks I'm crazy and go salsa. I need you to clarify. Thanks for listening to my voicemail. That's what we love about you. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well, we should ask Natasha Hensridge 
where are you with the hash browns versus the home fries versus the cube potatoes versus the new potatoes versus the purple potatoes? Mm. Oh, I love some purple potatoes with onions because I'm Ooh, fancy onions. and chic now. Mm. But growing up, definitely hash browns, definitely ketchup. Salsa when I'm on a diet, sure. And I don't want any sugar and I want it to be tomatoes and healthy. But again, he's from Texas, right? So it's going to be a different vibe out there. But he said ketchup too. I love the sweet ketchup flavor. Well, David, our caller's from, maybe he's, I don't know where the caller's from. All right, guys, so here's what you do. Or here's oh. my thing. What's your thing? <laughs> I, I, you don't slather ketchup all over the top no, of it. No, you dip, put dip. it. You put yeah. it off to the side. 100%. Right? You get a little pile of ketchup going, and you give it a couple shots of Tabasco exactly. on top of the ketchup just yes. to bring it to life. Then as you bust off the potatoes, the hash browns, you do a little side swipe. A little sweep. You just sweep it and catch the edge of it for each bite. Can we agree on that? Yes. Absolutely right. with you Not on that. Watering. Uh, <laughs> David, 33, South Texas. Uh. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this again. Oh, there he is. David? Hmm. It's blinking. I haven't taken a call in a while. Hello. Oh, there Hi, you there are. He is. What's going on, David? This is David. This is Jack up in Seattle. Oh, it's Jack in Seattle. All right, Jack in Seattle on line two. All right. Uh, what's going on, Jack? Yeah, it's uh, taking a break from work. I'm on lunch and uh, saw your tweet. And uh, figured I'd call in. What do you do? What are you taking a break from? I sell timeshares. Is that still a thing? You have no idea. How about <laughs> the fact that there's an entire cottage industry that has sprung up to destroy your business? Because every time I turn win. on the TV, there's some lawyer going, I'll get you out of your timeshare. You timeshare. Which is <laughs> weird. Not since... <laughs> Cigarette companies were forced to put cancer causing and show pictures of diseased lungs on their own product. You know, so you're doing battle with the timeshare lawyers. Well, hmm. here's the thing: I was a, I was a political science student up in the University of Washington. Law school was my next uh, you know play, and then my buddy was selling timeshares. And instead of spending you know a couple hundred grand on law school, I could just make the problem for other lawyers to deal with down the line. <laughs> what is a good, what's a good timeshare and a bad timeshare? Like, I, I, isn't there a version of a timeshare that works out that you'd be really happy with 10 years down the line? Like, I don't know, someone got a condo in Maui or something and I could use it. Oh, there's all kinds of weird stuff. Like in Malibu, you can go in, seven people can go in on like a $30 million house there's all kinds of possibilities now. Like seven people, each person puts up like $4.3 million and you get this $30 million house in Malibu and you get to use it one day a week. On rotation or something, or something like that. But half the people don't yeah. live there anyway. <clears throat> but anyway, the, the, the thing is, these people are buying points. I mean, you know what, like, you know, what that NFT scam going around was? Mm hmm. Timeshares, it's the original NFT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> it's a non-fungible type. You sell points these days. So you're not buying a week in Mexico or a week in Maui or a week in Waikiki. You buy points. You can use those. And I've got, I deal with rich people. I got people with a half a million dollar in equity owning millions of points with us that love it. And they're going all over the world, all over the country. It's not just one place. Yeah. Now that's appealing. No, yeah, that's get, interesting. You get yeah. your points and you get to yeah. shuffle around. And, that uh, makes sense. It's the silliest job in the world. Perfect. Yeah. And, and uh, can we negotiate <laughs> these points? Can we drive a bargain? You can, you can do a little bargaining. We've got uh, full retail amounts. I'm able to do a little bit better than that. I don't know. If, you, if you're looking to buy, you know, I just need your credit card and your social security number. All right. I'll give it to you right now. Yeah. What, what is doing most of your business? Like, where you do your you dinner parties? Is it like, I don't know what the, where you find timeshares? Well, no. So uh, we own about 250 different resorts. We partner with a bunch of others. So if you ever see those people with like the, the sign, down on vacation with like talk to me about how to get a free cruise. Yeah. 
It's foot traffic. Someone walks, someone walks into that meeting. They sit through, you know, a 90 minute presentation. People buy a timeshare. My job, I do telesales, so I'm doing it over the phone, so I only deal with existing owners. So I call people who already own a timeshare, get them to buy more. Does um, What's the number one destination, and it, could you liken it to this? Okay, so I do shows all over the country, uh, recently did some shows in Florida, had three or four people with me. And we just airbnb beat it because in the yeah. past, everyone would just get a hotel room, cost a couple hundred bucks a night times like four rooms. It wasn't very social. Like after the shows at night, we go back to show, we go back to the house, have a drink and watch Roadhouse versus I'll see you in the lobby tomorrow. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of thing. It was nice. So now I find myself staying at Airbnbs with a group when we're doing shows and traveling around. Because it's a little cheaper, but it's more social as well. But where's the number one destination that people go to? Well, I'll say, you know, one of our biggest destinations, and I kid you not, is Branson, Missouri. Oh, that's right. Because they want to see Yakov Smirnoff and Jimmy you know, Osmond. There's, there's, they've got like a go, we got a go kart park out there, and, you know, all the bells and whistles for a like fun resort camps. to take the kids at. Branson, Missouri. <laughs> The Wisconsin Dells, and then obviously, you know, the Floridas, the Hawaii's, SoCal. Branson because of the world-famous go-kart track? <laughs> well, most of our, you know, the, the world-famous go-kart track of Branson, Missouri. These people like taking their grandkids there. They like That's driving. Funny. Most of my owners they, like driving, not flying. They're still scared of getting on that plane. Don't they want to see all the shows in Branson? All, all the theaters there, All yeah. the theaters, the Andy Williams Theater and the Osmonds and... Yeah, Never heard one of them talk about that. Just the go kart track? <laughs> what the Sweet hell go-kart. is going? How amazing Wait is a go kart track? I want to check First that out. <laughs> Branson, Missouri, is where all the theaters of all the people. Here's how it works: you have a career, you do your career, and then at some point you would end up in Vegas, and you you would ride it out in Vegas. But once you're done riding it out in Vegas, you'd go to Branson, Missouri. And you'd open a theater over there, and you'd have, like, the Osmonds would, would be over there. And uh, all the comedians and all the whomevers, the musical acts, and everything you remember from your youth ends up having a theater in Branson, Missouri. But no one ever brings up the go-kart track. And your clientele go there for karting. <laughs> they go there for karting. They go there to stay in the resort. Because, I mean, when you own a timeshare, the thing is, it's not like staying in a hotel room. We've got, like, different kind of programs where you can work with, like, uh, Airbnb-like companies so you can get rental houses and things like that. Mm-hmm. But these people like staying mm-hmm. at the resort. They mm-hmm. like posting up. They like being where they get to. Okay. And right. I, I thought these would all be, you know, geriatrics or boomers. I've sold $40,000 to a 30-year-old. Wow. All right. We've all rethunk timeshare. Uh, now, yeah, give I, us. I certainly haven't. Uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> You're a terrible salesman. <laughs> it's a paycheck. I get it. All right. Do you have a, a, a movie title for us? It is. It's, uh, it's Downstream from Success. Hmm. Downstream from, from success. success. I feel like that's personal. I don't know. Is that All right. Well, tell? let's <laughs> l- let's really, just. Dude, would you like to know what this was based off of? Okay. We usually don't take this kind of help, but okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll step back. This is your show. No, no. I'll 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 listen uh, to its okay. origin stories. Yeah. Well, there was that video uh, a few months or weeks ago of the uh, the Down syndrome girl who wanted a little bit more respect. Mm-hmm. And she was asking for, you know, a margarita from a bartender and said, hey, bartender, if you don't give me the margarita, I can't drink the margarita. And then Luis Gomez and Tim Butterly, a couple other comedians, made a funny video about that. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking about a, a successful Down syndrome businessman making his way up the corporate ladder and becoming kind of like the, the top notch in something not Forrest Gump-esque, but not stumbling his way through, but really 
cutting through the corporate dialogue and mm. making it up. Yeah. All right. They did it with being there already. They already made this movie. Sort of. All Am right, I but, unfamiliar with that one? Uh, Peter Sellers, Chauncey Gardner, 60s, early 70s movie. Maybe Peter Sellers' this most famous movie called Being There, where he like was a simple man, even like a gardener or something, but everyone thought he was had wisdom and was a genius. And they do these movies every once in a while. I don't know. Being There, Chris, you can read the slug line for uh, being there but i'm gonna go a different let's do a different direction there downstream from success i'm gonna say you take a character he's a tucker carlson type character he's a big uh lightning rod commentator uh throwing throwing fire Getting on everybody, all the the crazed. Uh, everyone's he's got a target on it's his back. He's very he's a controversial, but he loves fly fishing. Now this is based on the actual Tucker Carlson. I, th- I, I think I've seen a video of him fly he, fishing. So. when he's not agitating the world, he's he's literally breaking away in in fly fishing. Okay, right. So he's this character that's bigger than big. But he breaks away to Montana and goes fly fishing. And in the bait and tackle shop, he meets a beautiful woman. And she's very liberal and progressive. But she has no cable and no internet because she lives a very simple rural life. Mm. And they start love. Love is found because she's, you know, tying his flies and baiting his hooks or whatever they do over there. And there's this this budding relationship is found. Maybe Emma Stone is her. She's a simple woman who works at her dad's bait and tackle place, and they're way off the grid. You know what yeah. I mean? And they don't, again, they don't have the internet. They don't have cable. She doesn't know who he is. She doesn't know who he is. He sees her Prius parked out in the parking lot with the coexist bumper sticker, so he's keeping it close to the vest (laughs) in terms of his thing. So he builds this life where he has to go back to Chicago, and he says he works for an ad agency or something like Uh that because he wants to find. But, you know, there's, of course, the scene where they're eating and people are tapping him on the shoulder wanting to get a picture and stuff. Or yelling at him, screaming at him. Yeah, yeah. She keeps asking. (laughs) She's asking, what's that about? You know, there's there's that. Now, I don't know who the guy is. Who's the guy? Ryan Reynolds? Will Ferrell? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Maybe Will Ferrell. Ferrell. He needs needs some an Oscar role. It's got to be Will. A serious serious role. And, And a lot of social commentary. Yes. You know, that's going on. Now, Natasha, at some point, she's got to find out, right? Mm-hmm. That he was lying mm-hmm. the whole time mm. and who mm-hmm. who he really is. Yep. Because they have to have that friend. Like, like she has to have that friend who's Tiffany Haddish who comes <laughs> in, you know, reunion style from the big city. Yeah. And, and it's like explaining them. You don't know who, you, you know, she's bringing the outside world yeah, to, to the her. bait and tackle <laughs> to the bait place and tackle that girl. she works in. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I actually like that. In fact, weirdly enough, I swear to God, I've been working on a show similar to that. Oh, exact really? Idea. Oh. Staunch Republican, staunch Democrat, exactly with those, with, with, you know, brings up all the issues and how people can see through that stuff. Uh-huh. Bait and the tackle de- shop. Well, it wasn't that, but... Oh. Yeah, interesting. Is Inter- it great idea? Is great, it great idea? Is is what? <laughs> oh, sorry, I got to sneeze. <laughs> sorry, bless, bless you. Oh, thanks. Is what you're doing a reality thing, or is it a drama? Or it's more? something that my boyfriend and I were tossing around a little bit. Uh huh. Um, we he's written like a he's written a treatment for it and everything actually. No, oh. literally, <laughs> it's just so funny that that's where you went with that because it's less of the surprise thing, but two people that fall for each other that are completely on opposite ends and learn to, you know, learn well, to see each other differently. It was hearing a word from our lawyers. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. How do we resolve this now? Speaking of resolving, <laughs> my phone says line two is where J- it says Jack from Seattle on line one, but there's nothing lit up on line one. It'll so. be two. It'll be two. Okay. Why not uh, do... Oh, it is two. All right. Wait a minute. Am I going crazy or is there a line two? 
Line two was the other guy. Oh, okay. It just, it's just wrong on the screen. We can. All right. Well, two. you can get the screen fixed, right? It would. Yeah. Hello. There we go. Jack. This is Jack. Hey, Jack. All right. Downstream from success. Now we didn't really figure out what the end was. He he keeps going back to this bait bait and tackle place. They find love. She's very progressive. She. Uh, you know, we have all those scenes where she's talking about how much she hates this, you know, Trump or how much she, how much she's in love with uh, the environment she is or something. And he's trying to sneak in little bits of information like, well, you know, the electric car does cause more uh, environmental impact, you know, the batteries and stuff. And they're laughing. What's that, Jack? It's the lithium in there. You it's know, the you lithium. Know. Yeah, he's about the lithium in those batteries. But now, but now, at some point, the jig is up. At yeah. some point, she finds out. Well, his station is. He has to do a report from that town now. There's something going on. Mm. And he has to report from there. Mm. And defend a position, maybe some sort of. Does he come around to her ways, or does she come around to his ways? Obviously, he's going to come around to her ways. He's coming around to her <laughs> yeah, ways. He's coming around to her ways. Right. Come on. No, I think the more interesting thing is that they see each other's side. That's the whole point, mm-hmm. right? Is it too good to be uh, No, true? it's a parable. Like It's like, yeah. hey, this is how we should be. Let, yes, let these yes. two be an example. Yes. Of how we should get along as a nation. I know. We need more of that, to be honest yeah. with you. The divisiveness is killing us. It's terrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All and right. she declares her love and her understanding on, on his show. She calls in. Mm-hmm. Oh, she calls She's gonna in. Say, oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. really just, just dump it all out on him, and he's going to play it, play it straight for a while. Oh, call her. I don't understand. But then he knows it's her. It's a little... It's got a little sleepless in Seattle... Part two. I was just going to say Nora Ephron movie, right? Where she's got the <laughs> yeah. bookstore and he's the big corporate book guy. But you've got mail, but you know, it's oh, okay. You've it got mail. Or, edgier you know, and crazier. If you've got yeah. mail, was sleepless in Seattle too, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, it was, it, the same, was it the <laughs> same people good. just doing the same thing again? Or is it somebody else? It was the same cast, but they played different characters. Yeah. I call it part two. Jack? <laughs> Do you need to have a lunch break when you sell timeshare? Like you're just sitting there, you could with a headset on, you could just be eating a sandwich while you're selling you know, stuff, I, couldn't you? Yeah, I, I could. I, I usually do. Yeah, what do you need to pick a break got, from? I got a salami and cheese pack. My girlfriend made me. You could call podcast during his break. Yeah, yeah. It's, Talk it's about funny that up here in Seattle. It's like it's like sixty degrees up in April in Seattle. His uh, boss is in Tampa. Global warming treating us right. Talking about that uh, world class go kart racetrack over there in Branson. <laughs> you know what you start? Yeah, gonna, you know, I'll be selling Branson in about five minutes. You know, oh. you know what you got to float. You know what you got to float. What's that? You got to go listen when you're talking to the people. You go uh, listen. They got a world class go kart track over there in Branson, and uh, you didn't hear it from me. But uh, F1 went to Vegas, and they went to Miami. They went to Texas. They may be coming to Branson. There's they may be coming to that. They're, they may be coming to that go kart track. Coming up. Now, I don't know for sure. I can't say for sure, but F1 could be coming to that go-kart track. Apparently, okay. they don't hey, even need up, you didn't even need it. Look up the Adam Carolla show, <laughs> and uh, you know, you'll get some information there. <laughs> Insider information. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, I want to know, Byron, look up all the acts that are in Branson right now. I just cannot believe <laughs> that you're not selling Tony Orlando or whoever's there right now. Instead, you're selling a go kart. We went track. to Branson. Nobody mentioned a go kart track to us. Uh, yes, at all. we may have been there pre pre go kart track, but that was only like three years ago, right? It was recent. Two years ago, we we drove by all the summer camps, <laughs> ate at Guy Fieri's restaurant, <laughs> and then and looked at all the theaters <laughs> <laughs> and heard Mike diatribe about religious people <laughs> and having to go to religious. There's a camp. turning point for him. Yeah. All right, Jack. Hey, it's been a pleasure. You may want to work in some of the world-class entertainment that is also at Branson. That's all I'm saying. Well, you're, 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 missing, you're missing the point of the people that go to Branson, Missouri, and own timeshares. I thought it was all about the Osmonds. That's all. All I, right. You know. I mean, my buddy Philip the Juggler went it's a, there. It's a, it's a different breed that owns the timeshare. Okay. Oh, we got the, you got the ABBA a tribute band playing there. 
You got. Uh, I mean, this is alphabetical order. We're, we have like ten A's. Abs- absolutely country, amazing acrobats of Shanghai, anthems of rock. I right, just now we're getting to the B's. It's back to the Bee Gees, Beach Boys, Bellamy Brothers, British Invasion. Carpenters, uh, the Carpenters tribute. Uh, it's I an mean, embarrassment of riches. It's nothing but entertainment. All right. That's true. And, and nothing true. about a go kart track. Elvis, probably not the real Elvis, but know. still Elvis. No. I'm starring Jerry Presley, who's maybe or may not be related to maybe related uh, related to Elvis. <laughs> All right. Lots of entertainment in uh, Brands. You ever been to Branson? I haven't, no, but there is a lot of entertainment there. You're not kidding. There's a lot of. That's why wow. they opened the place. I, I am. I want to. Now I want to go. Let me give you if a plug. If not, not even for the plays. We have that here for the racetrack. You go for the track. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cinderella's fun. Revenge. It's available in theaters. You play the uh, fairy wicked godmother. fairy godmother, mm. and uh, <laughs> it'll be it'll be a wide release. Where we'll, we'll, we should look it up uh, online, or where where we're we gonna find this bad boy? It's gonna be at theaters across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, Regent Theater, that's Regent Theaters, I mm-hmm. believe, right? I guess Regal. Regal, Regal. Regency. It. Oh, they're so close, there's, the names. Too close. Mm-hmm. Regal Theaters, yeah. So it's across the country, I don't know where, some places. Look it up. <laughs> and should <laughs> we have people uh, go to your Instagram at Natasha Henstridge? Why not? As well? Sure, yes. Daphne yes. Springs. I actually, have, I actually yes. have a little contest going on on my Instagram. What it's is gonna it? be later today. It's sweepstakes. You can win stuff. Oh, really? I forget the stuff. Don't ask me. It'll be on my Instagram, but there's some stuff to win. All right, so go to <laughs> Natasha Henstridge. Timeshare Brands. At Instagram. <laughs> yes, exactly. Timeshare and Brands. And Daphne Springs, <laughs> single females in the show. Uh, Fresno, tomorrow I'll be there at the Tower Theater doing stand-up. It's a beautiful, old, cool, historic theater. That's at 8 o'clock. And then Bakersfield, the Fox Theater, another historic theater doing stand-up that'll be saturday and then chicago at the den theater that'll be april 19th and 20th and then salt lake city oh man i'm getting tired i hope all those places have world-class go-kart tracks because i'm gonna need to blow some steam <laughs> off i uh, just go to amcrow.com for all the live shows and until next time it's time for natasha and daphne and chris saying mahala mahala